Hey guys, Luke back with another all-in-one guide video. This one's going to be on all the weapon locations in the game. As you can see, there's an absolute ton of weapons in the game, so it's going to be a very long video. And because of that, there will be timestamps down below in alphabetical order that you can use to navigate the video and find whatever weapon you're looking for. Also, it's going to be in playlist form, so each and every single one of the weapon locations in this video will have their very own video in a playlist on my channel named Weapons Locations. You can use that instead if you'd rather rather do it that way. And I did not put shields in this video because they're technically not weapons, but shields will be getting their own all-in-one guide video here soon, so don't worry about that. And if you like videos like this, leave it a like and consider subscribing for more guide and PvP content. And I'll see you guys in the next video. If you'd like the Academy Glintstone Staff, all you need to do is come to the Lake Facing Cliffs, and this is at the southern part of Liurnia of the Lakes. And this is right after you get through Stormvale Castle. But once you're here, you're going to go down into the Church of Irith and speak to Sorcerer Thops. And then you're going to exhaust his dialogue to the point where he tells you to go to the Academy. It'll be this option right here, the About the Glintstone Key. And then once you get that done, you'll head up to the Academy this building right here to the debate parlor grace and this grace is just right after you defeat the red wolf radagon boss fight and then from this room we're gonna go straight out and we're making our way to the extra academy key that we can give to Thops and then he'll move over to the academy and then we'll go to where he is and pick the staff up there I'm gonna go ahead and kill these guys because they sort of stop my ability to go up the ladder. You can go ahead and start jumping down the roof here. And then go ahead and jump down over to here. And there will be an open window you can jump through right here. And now we're going to very carefully make our way down. down to here and this is the extra Academy Glintstone key and now we can go ahead and return to Thops and we'll give him our extra key and then he will move over to the Academy You're willing to give my hail. Thank you. Now I can to resume with Back line, of course. Thank with you, the perhaps who knows. <laughs> Alright, and now we're gonna head back to the academy, but this time we're gonna go to the schoolhouse classroom grace. And this one's before the Red Wolf Radagon boss fight. And then just outside the door here to the right, we will find Thops, and unfortunately he just dies. And then that's how you get the Academy Glintstone Staff along with the Bell Bearing and Thops Barrier. If you'd like the Alabaster Lord's Sword, you can get it two different ways. I'll just show you this one. So you'll come to the Yellow Annex Tunnel. 
here in the mountaintops of the Giants. This is actually on the Halig tree side, consecrated snowfield. Once you get inside of this dungeon here, we're going to make our way through it. Go ahead and drop down right here. get down here, there's going to be an Alabaster Lord right there. Whoops, wrong weapon. Alright, we got, we got one on our side here. And once you slay him, that'll drop the sword. If you want another one, you could go to the Lake of Rot and do some platform raising over here and then you can kill another Alabaster Lord down that way and get another sword. If you like the Albanoric Bow, you can head to the Inner Consecrated Snowfield Grace. And then we're going to head up north that way towards that big tree. And then on the left side of the tree, there's going to be some Albanurics riding a wolf. And those ones have a chance to drop their full armor set as well as their bow. I do have my drop rates modified, so it should drop guaranteed. I'd like to show you guys the item dropping. There's one of them right over there. And there's one sitting right there as well and one riding the wolf there. Going to go ahead and attempt to kill here. Once that's dead, it should drop the Albanoric Bow along with the set. It's not guaranteed like I mentioned earlier, so you may, may take a few kills for you to do it, but eventually you will get all those items. If you'd like the Albanoric Staff, you'll head to the Volcano Manor here in Mount Gelmer. And then once you're here, you're going to speak to Tanis sitting right here in this chair, and she's going to give us a key. Fascinating. So, about the bow, if you have, rise with a... Hit join Volcano Manor and she'll hand you the key. And once you have this key, you can make your way over to this first door to the right. We're going to open it up. And in the back right hand corner of the room, there's going to be an item and behind it an invisible wall. And now that we have this open, we're just going to run through. Go ahead and grab this grace if you'd like. We're going to head out. Make a right. And we're going to jump right here. Drop down right here. Head up the stairs, and then we're going to cross the bridge. And then to the right of the bridge, there's going to be a ladder, and we're going to climb the ladder. Sorry for that lag spike. And then right on the other side of this, there's going to be a drop-off spot. We're going to drop down right here. And the staff that we're looking for will be sitting right here along with an Albaneric mask. If you'd like the Ant Spur Rapier, you'll head to the Shaded Castle Ramparts here in the northern part of Altus Plateau. To get here, all you need to do is go from the Bridge of Inequity, go down this way, hop down onto a Spirit Spring, 
and then another spirit spring down here and then make your way up through and then once you're at this grace you can head up this way and then over here is an npc we're going to kill and that npc has ant spur And you can see the NPC right there. Gonna try to bring her down over here because we're gonna get that giant after us. And once you slay her, she'll drop Ant Spur and her set. If you'd like the Arbalist, you'll just head to the Rampart Tower Grace here in Limgrave inside of Stormvale Castle. And then once you're here, we're gonna make our way out the door and jump across right here. Go down. Make sure you bring a stone sword key with you. Cause we're gonna be opening opening up a stone sword key door. There's some rats in here. I'm just gonna run past them. Right there is where you'd put your stone sword key in, and then that will give you access to this room. There's a God Slayer seal right here, and a God uh, Godskin prayer book is in that chest. And then once you get out here, we're gonna go immediately right, and then right again, and there will be a ladder right here. And there'll be another ladder at the end of this corridor. Two banished knights right here. We're just going to go ahead and run past. They might fly at you. Pop off right here. Down onto here. And then you can kill this guy. If you want. And then I'm going to head up this way and just jump across. And the arbalist will just be sitting right here on this corpse. And that's how you get that. If you'd like the Astrologer's Staff, you can either start as an Astrologer, or you can head to the Lyernia Lake Shore here in the southern part of Lyernia of the Lakes. And then right nearby this grace will be a merchant, and you can go ahead and buy the Astrologer's Staff from him. And he also sells the full Astrologer armor set, but the staff is right here. If you'd like Azur's Glintstone Staff, you can head to the Debate Parlor Grace here in the Academy of Rhea Lucaria. And this is directly after you defeat the Red Wolf Radagon boss fight. And then we're just going to head out into the courtyard and make our way up to the top part of the Church of Kaku. I'm gonna go ahead and kill these guys so they don't stop me on the ladder. Sorry for that lag spike. And then you can go ahead and jump down on the roof over here. Just go ahead and keep jumping. 
then the window right here, you can get right up inside of. And then we're going to come down to this beam right here, and we're just going to walk straight off onto here, and then again onto the platform below us. We'll go ahead and kill this guy. There's a Shattering Crystal spell over there if you want it. But at the end of this here will be a page enemy. And we're going to go ahead and kill him. And then right here, next to these heads, will be the staff you're looking for. If you'd like to farm the Bandit's Curved Sword, one of my favorite swords in the game, you can head down to the Church of Pilgrimage here on the Weeping Peninsula. And then just outside the church, there will be a graveyard with skeletal enemies that spawn. There is one that spawns wielding two of the Bandit's Curved Swords. And you kill him, and he has a chance to drop it. And there you can see it on the bottom right, the Bandit's Curved Sword. And then if you don't get it, you can just rest at the Grace, and then reset and do it again. If you like the Banished Knight's Greatsword, a good place to farm it would be over here at the Cathedral of the Dragon Communion in Kaelid. Once you're here, there's a Banished Knight who patrols the area. You can kill him and he has a chance to drop the sword. It's not guaranteed, so it may take a few kills. Let me look for him. Here he is. And once you kill him, he has a chance to drop it. He's going to drop it for me because I have my drop rates modified, so I'll show you it dropping. You can see it over there to the right, the Banished Knight's Greatsword. Um, and if you want to quickly reset, you can just head right back to the Grace and rest, and then he'll be right back and you can kill him again. If you'd like the Banished Knight's Halberd, a good place to farm that would be the Rampart Towers here in the Stormvale Castle area. And then we'll head out back the way you come up to the Grace from. And then down the stairs, there's a Banished Knight that wields a halberd down here. You can see him right there. We're going to go ahead and kill him. And then he has a chance to drop the halberd he's wielding, as well as his armor. I have my drop rates turned up, so he will drop the halberd. And there it is. It won't be as easy for you to get, so bring some item discovery items and increase your chances to get the halberd, but eventually killing him over and over again will net you the Banished Knight's Halberd. If you'd like the Light Crossbow or the Bastard Sword, you can head down to the Castlemorn Rampart here in the Weeping Peninsula. And then once you're down here just nearby at the Merchant, he will sell you the Bastard Sword as well as the Light Crossbow. If you want the Battle Hammer, all you need to do is come to the West Capital Rampart here in the capital of Landell. And then once you're at this grace, we're just going to make our way up this way. The battle hammer used to drop from a boss in the Murkwater Catacombs, but they changed it. So now it's just dropping from the guy up here by the Colosseum. And I don't believe it's guaranteed. I'm pretty sure it's a random drop. It's not from this guy, but the one after him. So I'm going to go ahead and go up the hill here and go around so I can get to the other guy. And you can see him down there. Just sort of chilling, holding the battle hammer. We're going to go ahead and kill him. And then once he's dead, he should hopefully drop that for you. And he didn't drop it for me, but he does drop the battle hammer. And that's how you get it. If you'd like the Beast Claw Great Hammer, you'll head to the Bestial Sanctum here in the northern part of Kaelid. And then once you're here, 
you'll speak to this guy right here and he'll send you off on a quest to bring death roots to him. After you bring seven death roots, he will give you the hammer along with many other rewards along the way. I have a full quest line walkthrough of this on my channel, so feel free to use it if you'd like to use that quest line guide to get yourself this weapon. If you'd like to farm the Beastman's Cleaver, you can head to the Beside the Great Bridge Grace here in the crumbling Ferrum Azula. And then once you're here, you'll turn around and go down. And then once we reach the bottom, to the right there will be a Beastman enemy wielding the cleaver which we're trying to farm. And all we have to do is kill him and he has a chance to drop it. It's not guaranteed, so you may have to kill him multiple times. So I'm going to go ahead and pull him. There you can see it on the right is the Beastman's Cleaver, and that's how you farm that. If you'd like to farm the Beastman's Curved Sword, you can head over to the Crumbling Beast Grave here in the Crumbling Ferrum Azula. This is the first grace you get when you enter the area. And then the Beastmen nearby have a chance to drop their weapon. So I'm going to go ahead and kill some. Here's one. I have my drop rates modified, so I can show it dropping for you. But each one of these guys that wields the sword has a chance to drop it. And that is how you get the Beastman's Curved Sword. If you'd like the Black Bow, you can head to the Avenue Balcony here in the capital of Landell. Then once you're here, we're just going to head out the door up this way. And make a left. Once you're up here, we're going to head down through the door over here, and then down a lift. Then hop onto this roof, and you'll need to do a running jump from this one to that one. And then the black bow will just be sitting right here. If you'd like the black knife, you can head up to the rampart side path here in the Alta's Plateau. And then once you're here, I'm just going to make my way down the road down to this place. And then outside of it, guarding the place, will be a black knife assassin. We're going to kill that guy, and he's going to drop us the... He or she is going to drop us the knife we're looking for. Once they're dead, the black knife should drop. If you'd like the Blade of Calling, you'll head to the Forbidden Lands. This is just right before you head up to the mountaintops of the Giants after you've killed Margot. And then we're going to go back towards the elevator. And then right up there, you can see at the open door. That's the one we're looking for. We're going to try to jump into there. And then open this door. There's an armor set right here, or just a chest piece. And then the Blade of Calling will be sitting right here. If you'd like the Bloodhound Claw, you'll head to the Volcano Manor here in Mount Gelmer. Then once you're at the main Volcano Manor room, you'll speak to Tanith here. She'll give you a key. Then once you have that key, you'll just bring it right over here to this door and open it up. Once you're inside, in the back right-hand corner, there'll be an illusionary wall right here. Jump past the snail, and then back in the corner over here. Not this room, it'll be the next one.
this room will be a Bloodhound Knight right there. We're going to go ahead and kill him. And then once he's dead, we can get the weapon from him. And that's how you get the Bloodhound Claws. If you'd like Bloodhound's Fang, you'll need to come to the Og Hill Lake South Grace here on the southern part of Limgrave. And then once you're here, we're going to make our way to this Evergoal. And we're going to go inside and fight the boss. And once we kill that boss, that will give us the weapon that we're looking for. And that's how you get Bloodhound's Fang. If you'd like the Bloodstained Dagger, all you have to do is come to the south of the Lookout Tower here in the Weeping Peninsula. And then once you get to this grace here, we're just going to make our way towards the bridge that goes across. And then sleeping right before you cross the bridge will be an enemy we need to kill that will have a chance to drop this dagger. Sorry for that lag spike. And then sleeping right here is the guy we're looking for. We're going to go ahead and kill him. And then he has a chance to drop it. And he did drop that for me, so that is how you get the bloodstained dagger if you'd like the bloody helis or helis or however that's pronounced you'll head to the bridge of inequity here in mount galmer and then we're going to cross the bridge over an altus plateau making our way to the writhe blood ruins and in the middle of that ruins is going to be a staircase leading down and then we're going to fight a little mini boss and then behind the mini boss will be a chest that'll have the weapon we're looking for Staircase is right here. Then once he's dead, we'll come in the room right here. And the bloody Halus will be right here. If you'd like the Bolt of Grand Sacks, you'll go to the Erdtree Sanctuary here in the royal capital of Landell. And this is right after you defeat the image of Godfrey, the golden one. And then in here, we're going to head down to the hallway, straight west. And then down here is going to be an elevator. We're just going to ride it straight down. ahead we're gonna hop down somewhere right here yep down to here onto this and then we're gonna make our way up and you can see the weapon sitting right there and that's how you get the bolt of grand sacks if you'd like the brick hammer, all you need to do is come to the Stormvale cliffside here at Lemgrave. And then once you get to this grace, we're just going to head up and inside of a room there will be a banished knight along with a key. You'll get the key and we'll open a door. And that door will open and give us access to a ladder that's going to give us access to the item we're looking for. Careful here, they're going to throw those. Same with this guy here. I'm just gonna roll through him. And then once you go in this room, the door will close behind you. 
and there's a banished knight back there in the corner. But the key you're looking for would just be sitting right here on this body. There's a curved sword talisman in the chest over there. But once you have the key and get out of the room, you'll drop down over here and open this door. And then you'll climb the ladder. And then you'll hop over right here, do it once more, and then the third time. And then back here, inside this room, on the ledge right there, is the brick hammer we're looking for. If you'd like the Butcher's Knife, you'll head to the Bridge of Inequity here in Mount Gelmer. And then once you're here, we're going to make our way up towards this shack right here. And then Anastasia Tarnished Eater is going to invade us, and we're going to kill her. And she is going to drop us the weapon we're looking for. have been invaded, just waiting on the invader to get to me. There she is. And then once she's dead, she should drop the weapon she's holding. And that's how you get that. If you'd like to get the regular Sastis, the non-spiked version, you'll have to find Gastok. You can find him either at the Godric the Grafted Grace after you defeat Godric the Grafted. That's where he is for me, kicking his dead body. If you didn't get this far yet, you can find him at the Stormvale main gate. Just right after you kill Margit the Fell Omen to the side path there. Either way, all you have to do is kill him and take his bell bearing and then you can purchase the Sasis or you can finish his quest line up and then he'll be a vendor but I'm just gonna go ahead and kill him and that will give me the bell bearing and now I'm gonna head back up over to the round table hold and give the bell bearing to the twin maidens and those twin maidens will then give me the weapon I'm looking for Offer a bell bearing and give him Gastok's bell bearing. And in the, this shop here, you'll be able to buy the Sastis, along with some other good items here. If you'd like the Cane Sword, all you have to do is head to the West Capital Rampart here in the Royal Capital of Landell. And once you're here, you're just going to go down this way, down the stairs and make a U-turn, and the sword is sitting right here, or the cane rather, cane sword, I guess it's both. If you'd like the Carrion Glintstone Staff, all you need to do is head to the Lyurnia Highway North Grace, and this is on the southeast section of Lyurnia of the Lakes. And then from this grace, we're just going to head straight up this way, and then right up here to the Highway Lookout Tower. And in that tower, we will find the staff that we're looking for. I don't think it's here, but it might be. Yep, that's a cookbook. Yep, 
believe it's at the very top. And that's how you get the Carrion Glint Blade Staff. If you'd like the Carrion Glint Stone Staff, all you need to do is come down here to the Carrion Study Hall. And this is on the eastern side of Liurnia of the Lakes. The closest grace is the Eastern Tableland. And then you just sort of head down this way and up through here. You can also come from the Eastern Liurnia Lake Shore and make your way over. But once you're here, we're going to head up and about halfway up the tower we will find the staff we're looking for. Once you get up here, you're going to get invaded. Well, not really invaded, but there's going to be a hostile NPC who comes in and attacks you. And they are a caster, so be ready. They spawn right here. They will teleport up through the tower periodically as you damage them. And the staff that you're looking for will just be sitting right here. And that's how you get the carrying glintstone staff. If you'd like the Carrion Knight Sword, go ahead to the Sorcerer Isle here in Liarnia of the Lakes. And then we're going to head over here, and there's going to be a stagecoach, and we're going to rob it. And that is how we'll get the sword we're looking for. First thing we need to do is get the carriage to stop, so we're going to hit one of the trolls. And then we're going to jump on the back and open the chest, and that's how we'll get the sword. If you'd like the Carrion Regal Scepter, you'll need to head to the Academy of Rhea Lucaria up here in Liurnia of the Lakes. And then once you make your way through the academy and defeat the final boss in the Grand Library called Renala, she will give you a Remembrance item. This here, the Remembrance of the Full Moon Queen. And then you'll bring it back to the Round Table Hold. And then go in the main room with the fingers and speak to this lady right here. You have now to become the as much And then you'll hit Receive Power from Remembrance, and you'll select the Full Moon one, and you can choose from either Renala's Full Moon or the Regal Scepter. If you'd like the Celebrant's Cleaver, Sickle, or Rib Rake, you'll head to the Windmill Village here in the northern part of Altus Plateau. And up throughout this village, there's going to be Celebrants that are mainly non-hostile. But if you attack them, they do pull out weapons and try to kill you. There are three weapons you can get as drops from these enemies here. And that's the Sickle Cleaver and the Rib Rake. If you kill one that's wielding the, whip, the Rib Rake, it has a chance to drop the Rib Rake and etc. for the rest. The only one you can't get is the Celebrant's Head Crusher Bone Skull thing. You'll see it once I attack. That one in the back pulled it out. You can't get that one from a drop. But as you can see, these two here had the cleaver, so you can get the cleaver from them. I have my drop rates turned up so you guys can see the items dropping. They won't drop as frequently for you. This one had the rib break, this one has a cleaver, and this one has a sickle. So we should see all three in this pile of enemies after I kill them. I'll go ahead and start looting. There's the rib rake, and I think the sickle was about right here. Nah. There's the cleaver again. Hey. 
And there's the sickle. And that's how you get those three. You'll just have to come up here and repeatedly kill the celebrants until you loot all three of them. It may take you quite some time. They're very rare drops, even with 60,000 discovery with a mod. I still wasn't getting them every kill, so that shows you how rare they can be. So go ahead and farm these guys, and you can get those three. If you'd like the Celebrant Skull, you'll head to the Windmill Village here in the northern part of Altus Plateau. And then once you're here, you're just going to make your way up the cliffside to the north. And just sitting right here will be the weapon that we're looking for. If you'd like the chain link flail, all you need to do is head to the Fort Hyatt West here on the east side of Limgrave. And then you'll head up this way, and then up here will be a hamburger man with a chain link flail weapon. And he has a chance to drop the helmet and the weapon as well. It's not a guaranteed drop, so you may have to kill them multiple times before you get anything. And you can see the hamburger guy right there. I'm going to go ahead and lure him out and then kill him. Now that he's dead, I'm going to go ahead and loot him. And he did drop me the chain link flail as well as the pumpkin helmet. If you'd like the Syncadia, you'll head to the Bestial Sanctum here in Northern Kalid. And then once you're here, you're going to head this direction. And then along the cliff, there will be a tree branch we can jump down onto. We're going to go ahead and do that. I believe it's right here. Hop down once more and then down onto this building. Hop over here, get off your horse, and then slow walk. That'll let you drop down to here. Then jump over to here. And then fall down here. Hop down to here. And then walk off with your horse right here, sort of in this direction. And then that will fall down to here, and then you're safe to just fall right here. And then the cicada will be down here. And that's how you get that. If you'd like Cypher Pata, you can head to the Round Table Hold where you do all your upgrading and NPC talking and stuff. And then you'll head out and jump down into this great hall. You'll be invaded by Mad Tongue Albridge, but that's okay. We can ignore him for now. And then you can head left here through the doors. And then in this next room, all the way in the back on a bed, will be the weapon we're looking for. That's how you get that. And if you don't want to fight the Mad Tongue guy, you can just use your memory of Lost Grace. Actually, you're just going to have to fight him and die. So, have fun. If you'd like to farm the Clayman's Harpoon, you can head down to the Siafa River Well Depths here in the Siafa River. If you don't know how to get here, you'll head over to the Mist Woods on the east side of Limgrave. Here's the Mistwood outskirts. And then you'll just head straight over to the Siafa River Well Entrance right here and ride it down. Pretty long elevator ride, but once you're down here, we'll mount up and head up this way. And basically, you're just going to kill Clayman enemies. And there's a bunch of them up through here. There are some right here. We can go ahead and start killing them. You can see them wielding the harpoon. And they have a chance to drop it. It's a very low chance, like very low. So you might take hundreds of kills just to get one. But I have my drop rates modified to show you it dropping. And there it is, that's the Clayman's Harpoon. Just keep killing all these guys over and over again. And if you don't get it, you can head back to the Grace and reset and do it over. 
If you'd like to get yourself the Claymore, all you have to do is head to the Castlemore Lift in the Weeping Peninsula. And this is at the very bottom of the map. And then we're just going to go up the lift here, and then the Claymore is in a chest not too far off from the beginning of this area. Claymore you're looking for will just be right inside here, hidden. And that is how you get the Claymore. If you'd like the Clean Rot Knight Sword, the Halo Scythe, or the Clean Rot Spear, you'll head to the Heart of Aeonia here in the Kaelid region. And then once you're here, you just need to come down to the Aeonian Swamp, and just right around these areas in the southern part, Clean Rot Knights will spawn from the rot waters and whichever weapon they're wielding they have a chance to drop like that one's wielding the halo scythe in his left hand and the sword in his right hand so he can drop those two I have my drop rates turned up to where it's pretty much guaranteed for me so I can show you guys the items dropping he's dead he should drop his full armor set as well as the halo scythe and, and the clean rot knight sword and then over here over this way a clean rot knight with the spear will spawn right here and he also has a chance to drop the sword the full armor set and the clean rot spear and then there are some other clean rot knights throughout the area. If you just roam around, eventually you'll find more. But what I would do personally is just go back up here and reset and just kill those two over and over again. If you'd like the clinging bone weapon, you'll head first to the village of Albanurix here in the southern part of Liernia of the Lakes. This is in the underneath part of this landmass, not on top of it. And then once you make your way up to the grace here, we're going to make our way up this way. And then up here, there will be a guy disguised as a pot. You'll go ahead and hit the pot. And then you'll you'll exhaust his dialogue, and he will give you the right half to the Halleck Tree Medallion. No secrets lie with me, not a one. Oh, please leave me be. Wait. Well. Oh, I will finish. The curse must be beg you. You must. And now that we have the right half of the medallion, that is the trigger for us to head over to the round table hold. And then we will be invaded by an NPC. We'll kill that NPC, and that NPC will drop the clinging bone weapon. There it is. And if you want his armor set, you'll just head back towards the left side. And it'll be sitting right here. If you'd like the club, short bow, or broadsword, you'll head to the western coast of Limgrave near the first step where you begin the game. You can just head up around this way and then down the coast to where I am now. And under this building thing will be a merchant and you can go ahead and open up his inventory and purchase any of those three weapons you'd like. If you'd like the coded sword, you'll head to the West Capital Rampart here in the Royal Capital of Landell. And then from here we're gonna make our way to the Great Hall. Over this way. Actually not to the Great Hall, but to the side of it. Jump up right here. There is a sanctified wet blade right there, and there's a hammer here too if you haven't picked it up yet. 
in the middle of the room as a rune arc. And then back in here. It's the coated sword sitting right there. If you'd like the commander standard, you're going to need to come to the Inner Aeonia Grace here in Kaelid. And then from here, you'll just head down into the boss room and fight the Commander O'Neill boss fight. And then once you defeat him, he will drop the commander standard weapon along with the unalloyed gold needle. Sorry for that lag spike. And once he's dead, that will drop the commander standard. If you want the composite bow, you'll head over to the Bellum Church here in the northern part of Liernia of the Lakes. Then once you get here, we're going to ride down through the hole down to the Nomadic Merchant nearby, and he will sell you the composite bow you're looking for. Right here. If you'd like the Cranial Vessel Candle Stand, you'll head to the Giant Conquering Hero's Grave here in the mountaintops of the Giants. To get here, you'll head to the Giant's Grave Post over here, and then you'll just follow the cliff side that you hit here, and then you'll hop over, and then that's how you get access to this place. And then once you're here, we're going to head down this way. Make sure you bring a Stone Sword Key with you, because you'll need one. Whoops, made a wrong turn. Take your stone sword key. And then down here at the end of the hall, you can see the item and it's sitting right there and that's the item we were looking for. And there's gonna be some imps waiting in ambush, so be careful. And that's how you get that. If you'd like Crepus's black key crossbow, you'll head to the round table hold. And then once you're here, you'll go to the right where the blacksmith is. Make sure you bring one stone sword key with you. And then head down the stairs this way. And then to our left, at the end of the hall, will be a stone sword key door. Once this door is open, we can just head right back here to this chest right here. Open it up. And that will give us the crossbow we're looking for. If you're curious what's inside of this one, I'll go ahead and show you. It's the Assassin's Prayer Book. If you'd like to farm the Crescent Moon Axe, you can head over to the Liftside Chamber Grace here in Stormvale Castle. And then once you're at this grace, just make your way out towards the courtyard and then up towards the birds. You're going to have to kill one bird on the way to this guy. And 
And then after you kill him, you'll head up left, up the stairs here. And then there's one guy who wields the axe we're trying to farm right here. And you can just kill him over and over again until he drops the axe for you. And he dropped it for me there, as you can see, over to the right. And then you can just jump down here and reset right here if you didn't get it. And then go try again. If you like the cross Naginata, you'll just head to the Rotview balcony. And we're going to make our way down to the Gale Tunnel. And this is in Kaled, by the way. Drop down right here, and now we are at the Gale Tunnel entrance. Go ahead and drop down right here. There's a grace right there if you want it. The cross Naginata is just going to be inside of this room here. And you'll find it behind this large octopus. Right here. If you'd like the crystal knife, you'll just head to the Rey Lucaria crystal tunnel here in northern part of Lyernia of the Lakes. Easy way to get here is just to follow the coast and then there will be a big hole right here. Can't miss it. And then once you're down here, we're just going to make our way to towards the end of the dungeon. And there's going to be a room with marionette soldiers in it that are guarding a chest, and that chest is going to have the crystal knife inside. room with the chest I believe is right here it's the next room actually not this one sorry this one here that's how you get the crystal knife if you like the crystal spear you'll need to head to the church of the plague you can get here by completing the Celia Town puzzle and heading up the cliff up this way. Or you can just go up to the northern part of Kalid and then drop down into it here. But once you're here, we're going to make our way up. You can see a battle mage enemy up ahead. And that's how you know you're in the right spot. Directly behind him. will be an invisible wall right here. And we're going to go inside of here. Roll right here. And once more right here. Jump across right here. Jump here.
Once you enter this room, you just head to the right here and go up onto the crystal. And then right here. And then we're going to make a little jump right here. And then right here, next to this item, will be an invisible wall. And then in here will be a chest with the crystal spear. If you'd like the crystal staff, you'll head to the crystalline woods, and this is on the western side of Laernia of the Lakes, just right outside the academy here. And we're going to make our way down over to the cave, and make sure you bring two stone sword keys with you, because you'll need two to enter. And you'll find the imp statue just sitting right here. And then we'll go ahead and head through, and I'm just going to run straight through to where the staff is. Once we get inside here, immediately to our left is going to be an invisible wall. And we're going to roll through that. I'm going to go ahead and kill this guy. And then right up here, in this chest, will be the crystal staff. If you'd like the crystal sword, you'll just head to the village of the Albanorix here in the southern part of Lyernia of the Lakes. And then underneath this massive land mass is where you'll actually be, not, not on top of it. But once you get up here from the grace, we're just going to head across the bridge. And then we're looking for a body. Right over here. That houses the crystal sword we're looking for. If you'd like to farm the Curved Club, you can head up to the Academy Gate Town Grace here in Liernia of the Lakes. And in this area, there are multiple Albanurix that wield a shield and the club. So we're going to go over this way towards this little piece of broken bridge, and you can see one holding it right there. I'm going to go ahead and kill him and show, you dropping, show him dropping the Curved Club. And you can see it over there to the right, and that is how you get the Curved Club. If you'd like the Curved Great Club, you can head over to the Temple Quarter here in the Liernia of the Lakes region. And there will be multiple enemies of Albanurix throughout this region that hold the Curved Great Club in their hands. And once you kill them, they have a chance to drop it. So I'll find one and kill it. Here's one of them. And he did drop me the Curved Great Club, and that's how you get it. There's multiple throughout the area. There's another. There's probably some el elsewhere. Yep, there's one right there, and that's how you get the curved great club. If you'd like Death's Ritual Spear, you'll head to the Snow Valley Ruins Overlook here in the mountaintops of the Giants. Alternatively, you can come from the Freezing Lake here and just head up and around, or you can come from Castle Soul Main Gate. We're headed over here to fight a Deathbird boss, so you'll need to make it nightfall out of grace before you head up. This is going to be a pretty challenging fight, so I might not one-shot it, so I'll likely just skip to the part where I'm killing him. And there's the death bird. And once he's dead, that'll drop the weapon we're looking for. If you'd like Death's Poker, you'll head to the Southern Aeonia Swamp Bank Grace here in Kaelid. 
And then you'll rest at this grace and make it nightfall. And now that it is night, we're going to head over to that death right bird over there. You can see him. And then once you kill this guy, he will drop the death's poker. he dies, he will drop it. If you'd like the Demi-Human Queen Staff, all you have to do is head to the south of the Lookout Tower Grace here in the Weeping Peninsula. And then from this grace, you're just going to make your way straight down through here over to the Demi-Human Forest Ruins. And then the Demi-Human Queen there will go ahead and drop the staff for us. And she's just in the back in this big room. she's dead, all the other ones are going to get scared and not back you anymore. And that's how you get the Demi-Human's Queen Staff. If you'd like the Digger Staff, all you need to do is come to the Rhea Lucaria Crystal Tunnel. And this is on the northeast part of Liernia of the Lakes. You can come from the Gate Town North Grace and just follow the coast up, and eventually you will see this big hole in the wall. And then once you're down where I am, we're just going to head through and look for these type of enemies here. This guy, for example, will drop the staff. And you see it did drop on the right there, the digger's staff. You can go ahead and kill this guy as well. I believe he's also one that drops it. And he did too, so it is a chance to drop. It won't drop as easily for you, so you'll need to kill him a few times. And that is how you get the digger's staff. If you'd like to farm the dismounter, you'll head down to the Murkwater Coast Grace here in Limgrave. And then just nearby, right around here, is going to be a camp of Kaiden enemies. And those guys have the chance to drop their weapon they're holding. It's not guaranteed, so it may take multiple kills. But I do have my drop rates modified so that I can show you guys the weapon dropping. And there it is. You can also get their helmet, armor, and gauntlets. And I believe they have greaves as well. Let me loot this one and see if they have greaves. He didn't drop greaves. So I'm assuming maybe, oh, they have trousers. So yeah, you can get legs there as well. If you'd like the Dragon Communion Seal, all you need to do is head to the Stranded Graveyard. And this is right where you begin the game, just directly after the tutorial. And once you're here, you'll put two stone sword keys in the imp pedestal, and then that will break the fog wall. And then from there, we'll make our way this way. Go ahead and stop about right here because there's a chariot that's going to come up. And once it turns around, we're going to make our way down. And you do have enough time to make it to the second doorway. And then make your way down to the third, and there's going to be some enemies that you have to kill. And then wait for the chariot to head back up that way, and then we're going to drop down. And 
then we can head up this way. There's going to be a group of enemies to the right. We're just going to run right past them. And then up ahead, you can see that enemy right there. That enemy right there is the one that's going to drop us the seal we're looking for, so I'm just going to go ahead and kill him. And then once he's dead, that will give you the Dragon Communion Seal. If you'd like the Dragon Great Claw, you'll need to head to where I am in Altus Plateau. You can get here from the Outer Wall Battleground and just ride all the way over. And then right in front of this gate is the Draconic Tree Sentinel, and we're going to go ahead and kill him and he drops the weapon we're looking for. he's dead, you should drop it. If you'd like the Dragon Halberd, you can make your way to the Worshippers Woods here in the Siafra River. If you don't know how to get down to the Siafra River, you can head over to the Mist Woods here in Limgrave, and then go over to the Siafra River Well entrance here, ride the elevator down, and eventually you will reach this area. But once you're at this grace, we're going to turn around and go back this way. Jump up on this pillar, make your way up towards this guy, and there's a teleporter right here we're going to take. Then once you're up here, we're going to travel over this direction. There's going to be a giant dragonkin soldier sitting right over there. You can see him in the distance. And we're going to go ahead and kill this guy, and he's going to drop us the halberd we're looking for. Once he's dead, that'll drop the halberd. If you'd like the Dragon Scale Blade, you'll head to the Lake of Rot Shoreside here in the Ainsel River. And once you're here, we're going to travel down the lake, and eventually we're going to see a Dragonkin soldier in the lake, and we're going to kill him, and he's going to drop us the weapon we're looking for. You can see him napping over there. There are some pedestals you can raise to make this a little easier, but I'm just going to go over there and kill him. you slay him. That'll drop the Dragon Scale Blade. If you'd like the Duelist Great Axe, you can head to the West Capital Rampart here in the Royal Capital of Landell. And then once you're here, you'll just head out the door up towards the Erdtree Sanctuary area. And 
instead of going up the tree branches here, we're just going to go straight up towards the Colosseum, and there's going to be two duelist enemies. The first duelist enemy is the one you're going to try to farm for this weapon. The one there, you can see him wielding the great axe we'd want. And he drops it. The next one doesn't drop it, so don't go fight him. And once you kill him, you can just go back to the grace and come back and keep trying until you get it. Once he's dead, he has a chance to drop it. And the rest of his set as well, and you can see the axe did drop for me because I have my item discovery turned way up so I can show you guys the uh, drops. If you'd like the Eclipse Shuttle, you'll head to the Castle Soul main gate here in the mountaintops of the Giants. And then once you're here, we're going to make our way through the castle. And inside the castle near a grace, we're going to find the weapon we're looking for. Up ahead, a Banished Knight's gonna be there. He's pretty tough, so be careful about this guy. To our left here is a Grace. I recommend grabbing that. And then back in here is the Eclipse Shuttle we're looking for. That's how you get that. If you'd like Eleonora's Pole Blade, you can come to the Altus Highway Junction here in the Altus Plateau. And then from here, we're just going to make our way up to right here, drop down, and in the second Church of America, we're going to get invaded. And we're going to kill the invader, and that invader is going to drop us the pole blade. They also drop the purified crystal tear for the Lord of Mo Moog Lord of Blood boss fight. Should be able to drop down right here without dying. And then in this church, we'll hopefully get invaded. There it is. Go ahead and kill him. Once he's dead, that'll drop Eleanor's pole blade. If you'd like to farm the Envoy's Great Horn, you can head to the Halig Tree Town Grace. Here in the Halig Tree. And I recommend bringing some holy damage negation because this guy hits very hard. Go ahead and buff up right here. Oh, wrong staff. And next up, I'm just going to head up this way and look behind me because there will be the guy shooting at me. Make my way up even more. Look back again. And then next, I'm looking for a place where I can drop down, which is right here. Almost didn't make it. Right. 
And now I'm just trying to make it down the bridge without dying or getting knocked off. And then up ahead here will be the guy we're trying to kill. And you can sort of stay safe right here. I recommend using some sort of ranged spell to hit him over this thing if you can. If not, just charge him and try to kill him. And he should just die from the rod, but I'm going to go ahead and hit him again. And then once he's dead, he has a chance to drop that massive weapon he's holding. I have my drop rates turned up so I can show you guys the item dropping. And you can see it right there, the Envoy's Great Horn. If you head up the, the branch here, there's one of the smaller enemies that drops the weapon he's wielding. The medium-sized one also drops that weapon as well. And then the real big one, again, right up at the top there for another chance to get the Envoy's Great Horn. And that's how you farm that. If you'd like to farm the Envoy's Horn, you'll head to the East Capital Rampart here in the Royal Capital of Landell. And then once you're here, you'll just head straight out. And it's pretty easy to farm this one. You just come out and then there will be a bunch of these enemies with the horn. You kill them and they have a chance to drop it. I have my drop rates modified so that I can guarantee the drop so I can show it to you guys. And you can see it over there on the right, the Envoy's Horn. Might take you multiple kills, but there are plenty of them along here, and if, and if they don't drop you, you can always just head back to the Grace and reset. If you'd like the Envoy's Longhorn, you can head to the East Capital Rampart here in the Royal Capital of Landell. And then once you're here, you'll just head out the door, and then down along the Rampart wall here, there will be large versions of these guys with a bigger weapon, and you can see them down over here. I'm going to go ahead and kill him, and he has a chance to drop his weapon. It's not guaranteed, but I do have my drop rates turned up, so I can show you guys. And you can see it right there. Might not drop for you, and if it doesn't, you can always just reset at the grace and head back this way. If you'd like the Erdsteel Dagger, all you have to do is come to the Mistwood outskirts here in Limgrave. And then from here, we need to do a small quest line, and it's very small. We're just going to come over here, talk to Kenneth. And then Kenneth is going to send us down to Fort Height in the south, which I will show you where that is later. But basically up on the top of here is going to be a noble type guy. And you're going to take his quest. I would have to pray honestly, God first, then he in <laughs> and to think yeah. what if my fort lies to this what my fort lies to now we need to go down to his fort, which is all the way down here, Fort Height. And we're gonna go to the top and kill the knight at the top. pretty easy to get down here you just travel straight down through There's the knight that we're looking for. We're going to go ahead and kill this guy. Well, that rat came out of nowhere. And now that he's dead, we should be able to return to Kenneth Hot, and then he will give us the Erd Steel Dagger. Waiting 
Did you manage oh, excellent. Well done, my I knew I was now. Go ahead. And that's how you get that. If you'd like the Erd Tree bow, you can head to the Erd Tree Sanctuary here in the capital of Landell. This is directly after defeating the image of Godfrey, the golden one. And then from here, we're going to head out the door up the route. And then instead of going down there, we're going to head this way. There's an open window over here. And then inside of here, in this chest, we'll find the bow we're looking for. As a bonus item, over there on that chair, hanging in the middle of the room, is a prayer book. And that's how you get the Erd Tree bow. If you'd like the Erd Tree grape bow, you'll head to the Stranded Graveyard here in Limgrave. And this is just right where you begin the game. And then once you're here, you'll put two stone sword keys in this pedestal here, and that will open the fog wall. And make sure you bring a bow with you or some kind of ranged weapon. Then you're going to follow behind the chariot. You do have enough time to hit the second doorway. And there will be enemies throughout here too, so be careful. Once the chariot goes back up, we're going to drop down. And that will buy us enough time to run down here and hop down. These guys are so annoying. Alright. And then you'll get your bow out. And then you'll shoot this thing up ahead and that will lower the flamethrower trap. And you'll need your bow again up ahead. Once you get out here, you're just going to drop straight down. And then drop down again right here. And this will be down for you, but it's not for me, so I'll go ahead and pull this lever right here. top of this there will be a banished knight enemy. We're going to go ahead and kill him and then we will shoot a cauldron like thing to drop a cauldron on the chariot and that will cause it to explode and that's how we get the Erd Tree Great Bow. Be careful with this guy, he's pretty tough. Right here you'll see the cauldrons and the time to shoot is right when the chariot hits the wall. And that's how you get the Erd Tree Great Bow. If you like the Erd Tree Seal you can hit up the Volcano Manor here in Mount Gelmer. And then once you're in the main Volcano Manor room, you'll speak to Tanith. She'll give you a key for the drawing room. Once you have that key, you'll bring it right over here to this door. Open it up, and in the back right-hand corner is an illusionary wall. You'll just roll, and that'll break it. And we'll head down through here, past the snail.
Now we're in the prison town church. You can go ahead and grab the grace and then open up this door right here. And then to the right, we're just going to head out and drop down. Drop down right here. And then past the omen killer. And then in the back of this little dark room back here will be the Erd Tree Seal. If you'd like the S dock, you'll head to the Liurnia Lakeshore Grace here in the southern part of Liurnia of the Lakes. And then just at this Grace, you'll find yourself a nomadic merchant. And you'll go ahead and open up his shop, and he will sell you an S dock. If you'd like the Executioner's Great Axe, you can head up to the lake facing cliffs here in the Liurnia of the Lakes region. This is just after you get through Stormvale Castle. And then we're going to ride over here, and there's going to be one enemy over that way that holds the axe and has a chance to drop it. And it is not guaranteed, so if you don't get it, you're going to have to reset and then head back and kill him again until you get it. And he just spawns back in here. see it over there to the right and that is the executioner's great axe if you'd like the falchion all you have to do is come to the mistwood outskirts and this is just in limgrave and then from this we're going to go under this large structure here and there's going to be demi humans that wield the falchion we're going to kill them and those ones have a chance to drop the falchion is anybody there? there's one of them he did not drop it for me. There's several more there. And that one did drop it, and that's how you get the falchion. If you'd like the Falling Star Beast Jaw, all you have to do is head to the 9th Mount, Mount Gomer campsite here in Mount Gomer. To get here, all you have to do is come from the first Mount Gomer campsite. Just head up over this way, climb some ladders, and eventually you'll make your way over to here. And then we're going to jump up the Spirit Spring, and up at the top is going to be a Falling Star Beast. We're going to fight it and kill it. And once he's dead, he's going to drop us the weapon we're looking for. But once he's dead... That'll drop the weapon we're looking for. If you'd like the Family Heads weapon, you'll head to the Sage's Cave here in the Altus Plateau. I just came from the abandoned coffin and made my way up this way and entered in there. And then once you're in here, we need to make our way to the boss of the dungeon. If you happen to get stuck, just go ahead and roll. That's probably an invisible wall. Careful right here, there's a little hole in the floor. And then right inside the room to the left here, there'll be an invisible wall. And then another invisible wall right here. And then that will let you into the boss fight. And then once you kill the boss, that'll drop the weapon that we're looking for. Once 
kill him. I'll drop the family heads. And these guys should stop attacking. If you want the flail weapon, all you have to do is come to the Og Hill Lake North Grace, and this is in the Limgrave region. And then from here, we're going to head over here to this chariot. And on the back of the chariot, near some guards, will be the chest that we're looking for that will give us the weapon that we're looking for. And that's how you get the flail. If you'd like the flameberg, First, you'll need to head to Kaelid. And then in Redmain Castle, you'll need to defeat Star Scourge Radon. And then after you have him defeated, you'll return back to the chamber outside the plaza and head up to where I am now, just outside of the castle door here. And then you'll speak to Jaren. I brave chest celeb festering. If I'm no longer I have a told business. May we meet. It's may we meet. All right, and now we're going to tr fast travel back down to the chamber outside the plaza, and we're going to rest at that grace. And then once we do that, the doors in the castle will now be opened up for us to traverse the area. So we'll head out around these guys. Make our way up the stairs here. Climb this ladder. And then right here, where this big pumpkin head guy is, will be the flame bird. If you'd like the flowing curved sword, You'll head to the Inner Consecrated Snowfield. To get to the Inner Consecrated Snowfield, you'll need to get both halves of the Halig Tree Medallion and head up the hidden path to Halig Tree, and then make your way up. Then once you're here, somewhere over here is going to be a caravan pulling, or yeah, being pulled by two trolls. You can see it right over there. There are also, if you come here at nighttime, there's going to be two uh, night riders, so be careful. We're going to head on to make it stop, and then we're going to get on the back here and grab the sword. And that's how you get that. If you like the Forked Great Sword, you can make your way to the Road's End Catacombs on the western side of Lyurnia of the Lakes. You can get here by going to the Converted Tower and going up and around, or you can come from the Revenger Shack and just head down this way. But once you're inside the catacombs, you can farm the weapon you're looking for off the first imp of the area. And it's just right here. He has a low chance to drop the weapon. And he also drops a helmet. And I have my drop rates modified so that I can show you the items dropping. And you can see it right there on the right, the forked greatsword and the imp head wolf. He can drop both of these things, and that is how you get those. If you'd like the Forked Hatchet, you can make your way over to the Murkwater Catacombs here in the Limgrave region. You can really do it in any catacombs that have imps, but this is the one I'm going to show you. And then once you're inside this catacombs, you'll head down in. And then from each of the regular imp enemies, like these ones here, that wield the hatchet, they have a chance to drop it. They also drop a helmet. They drop the cat helmet and the fork hatchet as well, as you can see. And if you don't get it from them, you can just walk right up here and rest at the grace and try again. And that's how you get that. If you'd like the frozen needle, you can head to northern Lyurnia Lake Shore, here in Lyurnia of the Lakes. And then we're going to make our way over to the King's Realm Ruins, and then there's going to be an illusionary floor we'll break and go down into. And then we need to kill a revenant. And then once that revenant's dead, we'll be able to get access to the room behind it where we can loot the frozen needle. An easy way to tell if you're at the right place is this arch right here. This is where you need to be. And then right here, you'll roll. And the floor will go away. And the boss inside of here can be a little challenging. So we're going to go ahead and try our best to kill him. A lot more challenging at lower level, obviously. 
But once he's dead, this room back here will open up. And the frozen needle will be sitting right here. If you'd like the full moon crossbow, you'll head to the debate parlor grace here in Leonia of the Lakes. And then from this grace, we're just going to make our way out the door into the courtyard. And then we're going to head up to the left here. It's going to be some casters, so be ready to roll. jump down here. Up ahead there's going to be two mannequin enemies and I'm going to kill the one to my left so it doesn't knock me off the ladder. Whoops. We got a spammer. All right, we're going to jump down over here. And then once more right here. And then make the jump here. Make sure you do it at the very edge or you won't make the jump. It's pretty tight. And then drop down here. Running past these mannequin guys. And then up the ladder. very long ladder. We got some uh, company with us. And then right here in this chest will be the full moon crossbow. If you'd like Gargoyle's Halberd and Gargoyle's Black Blade, you'll head to the Bestial Sanctum here in the northern part of Kaelid. And then just outside of the Sanctum will be this Black Blade Kindred enemy. You'll have to kill him, and he will drop the weapon you're looking for. He does hit very hard. Once you kill him, he should drop both of the weapons we're looking for. If you'd like the Gargoyle's Great Axe, you'll head to the Outer Wall Phantom Tree here in the Altus Plateau. 
and then you'll make your way up the road here and eventually a gargoyle is going to spawn in and we're going to go ahead and kill him and then we'll drop the axe we're looking for This is one of those fights where the guy's not hard, it's the camera that's hard. I recommend staying as close as you can to him, because he does those big, slow, arcing, charge up attacks. And once he's dead, that'll drop the Gargoyle's Great Axe. If you'd like the Gargoyle's Halberd, You'll head to the West Capital Rampart here in the Royal Capital of Landell. And then from here, you'll just head out the door, and we're going to kill that big gargoyle over there. And that gargoyle is going to drop us the weapon that we're looking for. We'll see, we'll see if we can't get a good surprise hit on him. he's dead, that'll drop the, the uh, halberd we're looking for. If you'd like the Gargoyle's Black Blades and the Gargoyle's Black Axe, you'll head to the Grand Lift of Rold, here right before the mountaintops of the Giants. Alternatively, you can come from the Forbidden Lands and head up this way, but we're just going outside here to where we'll spawn the Black Blade Kindred, Gargoyle, and we'll go ahead and kill him, and that will give us the weapons we're looking for. Whoops. If you'd like Gargoyle's Greatsword and Gargoyle's Twin Blade, you'll head to the Aqueduct Facing Cliffs here in the Nocron area. And then once you're here, we're going to head up to the Waterfall Basin and fight the two twinned gargoyles, kill them, and they will drop the respective weapons. Alright, and now I'm going to go ahead and cut to the part where I'm killing them. Then once you slay him, they will drop both of those weapons. If you'd like the Gelmer Glintstone Staff, all you need to do is head to the Temple of I Glay here in the Mount Gelmer region. And this is the grace right where you kill the Godskin Noble boss fight. And then we're going to head up the lift here. And 
then head out this way. The first thing we're going to do is unlock a shortcut so it's easier to get back to the enemy we need to farm. If you have the shortcut already unlocked, you can go ahead and skip ahead. Up ahead there's going to be an Iron Maiden, or a Virgin Maiden rather, and we can go ahead and just run right around them. Jump through this window and then open the door over here. Go ahead and run past this serpent. And then over here, there's going to be a guy right here. We're going to go ahead and kill him because he gets to be a little annoying. And then right here we're going to pull this lever. Or, no, we're going to jump on this button and send this down, hop off, and that will unlock the shortcut we're going to use. And then we'll run this way. And I'll show you how to get back to that shortcut after I show you where the staff is. Staff is a pretty rare drop, so you will likely have to kill this guy a bunch of times before you get it. I have my drop rates turned up so I can show you the staff dropping. But this guy right here, you can see him wielding the staff. He drops it. Now I'll go ahead and loot his body and show you the staff. And you can see it right there, the Gelmer Glintstone staff on the right. And then now I'll show you where the new shortcut is that you just opened up. From the grace, you just turn left instead of going right up the lift. And then over here, there will be a room. And that's the elevator you sent down earlier. And now you have easy access to get back to running back to that staff-wielding snake man. And that's how you get the Galmer staff. If you'd like Giza's wheel, You'll just head to Volcano Manor here in Mount Gelmer. Then once you're at the manor, you're actually just going to head straight upstairs here. And there will be an NPC up there we'll kill. And that guy will have the wheel we're looking for. There he is. Once he's dead, he'll drop you the wheel. If you'd like the Ghost Flame Torch, you need to first kill Star Scourge Radon over here in K-Lid. And then once you have him defeated, he will open up a massive hole in the ground over here in Limgrave. Where I am now, near Fort Height, as you can see. And then we're going to go ahead and go down the hole, and we'll find the Ghost Flame Torch down this hole somewhere. You can actually see it sitting right over there. But first we need to make a jump from here to there. So do a running jump. One more running jump right here. And then the ghost flame torch will be sitting right here. If you'd like the giant seal, You'll head to the Giant Conquering Hero's Grave here in the mountaintops of the Giants. And then you'll first come over to this grave post here, the Giant's Grave Post. And then you'll make your way along the cliffside here 
after you hit this spot, then you'll hop over, and that's how you get over to the giant conquering hero's grave. And then once you're here, we're going to head out down this way. And then jump out the window. Run past the large cat. Run through here. Oh, might get hit by the fire. Nope. Hit this. That should stop the flamethrowers. Then we'll head through here. Go down the lift. Send it back up, get off. Pull the lever. And then get inside of that. Head up the ladder here. And to the right, right over here, not near this pre late, will be the seal we're looking for. And that's how you get that. If you'd like the giant crusher, you can head to the outer wall phantom tree grace here in the Altus Plateau. And then from here, we're going to make our way down to about right here. There's an unmarked military camp. And in that camp will be a chest with the giant crusher. And also one of these guys. That's how you get the giant crusher. If you'd like to farm the glaive, you can head up to the Church of Vows here on the east side of Lear Lyernia of the Lakes. And then we're just going to make a few steps this way, and then the skeleton that has the glaive will spawn right here, and he has a chance to drop it. It's not guaranteed, so it might take you a few kills. Once he's dead, he'll drop the glaive. If you'd like to get yourself the regular old glintstone staff, you'll head to the Road to the Manor here in Lyernia of the Lakes. Alternatively, you can also just start as a prisoner. But we're going to head down into the King's Realm Ruins, and there's going to be several sorcerer-type enemies that teleport around, and we're going to head and kill one. And that should drop the staff. It's probably a low drop chance, so you might need to kill a few. But here's one of them, and he did drop me that staff. If you'd like the Godskin Peeler, you'll need to head to the Windmill Village here in the northern part of Altus Plateau. And then from here, we're going to go up to the very top and fight the Godskin Apostle at the top. And once we kill him, that will drop the weapon we're looking for. Once he's dead, that'll drop the Godskin Peeler. If you'd like the Godskin Stitcher, 
You'll need to make your way to Volcano Manor here in Mount Gelmer. I've already killed the boss that drops the Stitcher, but I'll go ahead and show you how to get over to him. But the first thing you'll need to do is talk to Tanith here in the chair. She'll give you the drawing room key. And then you'll head over here, open the first door on your right, and then in the back right corner there'll be an inv invisible wall. You'll just roll and it'll open it. And then we'll head back here past the snail. Through here. Feel free to grab this grace right here and then open this door. Once this door is open, we're going to make a right. Jump down right here. Pop down here. Go up the stairs and into the left across the bridge. It's going to be a snake guy up ahead. Best way to dodge him is just to jump. And then make your way over this. Come through this door to the left and then over the railing once we get inside this room. Turn around. Through here. There's a grace inside the room to your right there if you want it. And you'll come over here and you'll open this door. And then you can just jump straight down. Across the lava. Don't be afraid to touch it because it doesn't really do that much damage. Then up here there's going to be a really annoying snake enemy. We're just going to wait for him to pass. Get on this little elevator here. There's a black flame monk up here. We're going to go ahead. I'm just going to go ahead and kill him. And then once he's dead, right up inside of this door is the Godskin Noble boss fight. And if you want a faster way to get back, like a shortcut, you can come over here and hit this lever, and that'll drop the bridge. And then that's the door where we first came into this area, right down over there. If you can see it right there and then you can easily get back to fight the boss instead of running through that whole area again so that's how you get that if you'd like the god slayer seal all you need to do is come to the rampart tower here in stormvale castle and then once you're at this grace we're just going to head straight out the door here and jump down and then make our way over here drop down again and then once more down into this. And you will need to bring a stone sword key with you. Just be noted of that. There's some rats up here. We'll go ahead and kill. And then you'll stick your stone sword key in the imp pedestal right here. And then inside of this room, in this chest, you'll find the God Slayer seal. And then over here, you'll find the God Slayer prayer book. Or God Skin prayer book, rather. And that's how you get that. If you'd like the God Slayer's great sword, all you got to do is come to the Divine Tower of Kaelid and make your way to the basement. And then once you're in the basement, you're going to have to fight the Godskin Apostle boss fight. And then after you defeat him, there will be a chest behind him that we're going to go ahead and open, and that will drop the God Slayer sword for us.
forgot about the second part of that. He's gonna throw a fireball at me if I heal him. he's dead he'll just head right back over here he'll drop the full set of his armor and then back inside of this room there will be a chest we're gonna go ahead and loot it and that is how you get the god slayer's great sword if you'd like the golden epitaph weapon you'll head up to the oriza hero's grave here right before the capital of lane dell you can come from the Capital Rampart Grace and just sort of go around here. There's a Spirit Spring right here you can drop down on and then ride your way down. And then that'll easily get you here. And then once you're here, you'll need a Stone Sword Key. And you'll stick it right here. And you can see the body inside the room there. And that's where you'll get the weapon. And that's how you get the Golden Epitaph. If you'd like the Golden Halberd, you'll have to go all the way back to where you start the game at the first step. And then from here, you can see the Tree Sentinel there. We're going to have to go ahead and kill him, and he will drop the Golden Halberd. Sorry for that lag spike. Once he's dead, you'll get the weapon you're looking for. If you'd like the Golden Order Greatsword, you'll head to the Cave of the Forlorn here in the Consecrated Snowfield. It's pretty easy to get here, you just head up the river and then enter the cave. And then once you're down here, you just head this way. Once you see this mouth of a cave, just head left instead. And then back here, you'll jump. And then you're going to make a running jump over to there. Head down this way. There's going to be some angry jellyfish down here. Go ahead and just run past them. Go ahead and drop down here. And the boss door is right over here. We're going to have to fight a misbegotten warrior. And he'll drop the sword for us. And I'll just go ahead and skip to the part where I'm killing him. And once you slay him, that will drop the Golden Order Greatsword. If you'd like the Golden Order Seal, all you have to do is head to the Outer Wall Phantom Tree here in the Altus Plateau. And then we're going to make our way up towards this Minor Erd Tree Church here and loot it up there. And the Golden Order Seal will just be back here on this corpse. If you'd like the Golem's Great Bow, you can head over to the Altus Plateau Grace just right after the Grand Lift of Dectus here in the Altus Plateau. 
And then right over here is going to be one with a halberd and one with the bow. You can see the one with the halberd is the first one. We don't want to kill him. We want to kill his friend to his left. And he will have a chance to drop that bow. I have my drop rates modified to where it will guarantee the drop. So I'll go ahead and show you the item dropping. There is the golem great bow right there. The other one doesn't drop it like I mentioned, so I'm going to go ahead and teleport back. And now I'll mention a couple of other spots you can farm this at if you don't have access to Altus Plateau yet. The other place you can go is down here in the Stormvale Castle area at the Limgrave Tower Bridge. You'll just head all the way to the end of the bridge and there will be a golem shooting at you with a bow. You can kill him and he has a chance to drop it. And also down here in Kaelid, over at the Siafra Well Grace. This is after you go through the underground below the well area in the Siafra River and go up that. There are two archer golems along the road here up towards the Colosseum and they also have a chance to drop it. And like I mentioned it's not guaranteed so it might take a few kills to get it. If you want the golems halberd you'll have to head to the Limgrave Bridge and this is inside of the Castle of Stormvale. You can easily get here just by going through the main gate and to the right or coming from the lift side chamber into the courtyard and then make your way down this way. And then once you're at this bridge, we need to kill giants and those giants will drop the golem's halberd. The trick to killing these guys is just to knock them down and then you can stab their critical point and that will usually just kill them. Didn't seem that one dropped it so I think it's probably from this one. That's how you get the Golem Salbert. If you'd like the Grafted Blade Greatsword, all you gotta do is head through the Castle Morn area in the bottom part of the map. And then once you reach this grace here, we're gonna head towards the boss fight, kill the boss, and the boss should drop the weapon that we're looking for. See the boss door right over there? he's dead, that will drop the grafted blade greatsword. If you'd like to farm the grave scythe, you can head over to the lake facing cliffs here in Liernia of the Lakes. This is directly after Stormvale Castle. And then we're going to head over to this graveyard with the respawning skeleton enemies. And there's going to be three skeletal mages that wield the scythe that have a chance to drop it. And it is just a chance, so it may not drop on the first kill or even the second, so you might have to farm them for a minute. But I have my drop rates modified to where that you can get it first try. So I'm going to go ahead and show you the item dropping. And there's the Grave Scythe. There's another one over here that spawns. And I believe there's another one, yep, right there, and that's how you get that. If you'd like the Gravel Stone Seal, you'll head to the West Capital Rampart here in the capital of Landell. And then once you're here at this grace, we're just going to head out over to here. And we're going to hop over down onto this building. 
And then down at the end of this will be two knights. And we need to kill them in order to get the seal. Guess we have to go around up this way. I'm down here. Please, stop spamming. Alright, seems like he's gonna be not wanting to cooperate. Pretty cool how they perfectly designed that for roll catch. Anyway, there's the gravel stone seal along with the armor that they drop. The rest of it isn't guaranteed, but it can drop from them. If you'd like the great bow, you can go to the outer wall battleground here in the Altus Plateau. And then from here, you're just going to make your way north up this way to the highway lookout tower. And at the top of the tower, you'll find the great bow. Side of this chest will be the great bow. If you like the great club, you can head to the old Altus Tunnel here in Altus Plateau. To get here, all I did was come from the Erdtree Gazing Hill and then just ran straight up the road to here. You will need two stone sword keys to enter at the door, and then once you're down here, we'll head through here. The weapon, weapon we're looking for drops from the boss of the area, and it's just right inside of here. Once we kill him, he will drop the weapon we're looking for. Fighting these guys is more of a camera fight than a boss fight. But once you kill him, he will drop the weapon we're looking for. If you'd like the great EP, or however you pronounce that, all you have to do is come to the Og Hill Lake South Grace here in Limgrave. And it's just right over here. 
pretty easy to find. I'll go ahead and show you where it's at. Just right over here in this chest. And that's how you get the great EP. If you'd like the great knife, you can head to the Craftsman Shack here in Mount Galmer. If you don't know how to make your way up here, you can head over to the Erdtree Gazing Hill and then just head up this way and around over to the Seathwater River and then head up through the river up to the Seathwater Terminus and then go around this lava river here and then up this way past the Hermit Shack and you'll be at the Craftsman Shack. And then right over here there's going to be a big herd of sheep and there's going to be some demi-humans wielding the great knife inside the herd and we're going to go ahead and kill them. And they have a chance to drop the, the uh, great knife weapon, it's a rare drop so it'll, it'll probably take multiple kills. But there are four here and I have my drop rates turned up so I can show you guys the weapon dropping. And there it is. If you like the Great Mace, you can head to the Grand Lift of Dectus here in the northern part of Liernia of the Lakes. And then we're just going to make our way down this way towards the Bandit Camp. And at the Bandit Camp, we will find ourselves a chest. And in that chest, we will find the mace we're looking for. And you can see the camp over there. And the chest is just in right here. And that's how you get the Great Mace. If you like the Great Omen Killer Cleaver, Come to the Altus Highway Junction here in the Altus Plateau. And then from here, we're going to ride our horse down this road here back to the Perfumer's Grotto. And in that grotto will be a boss fight. We're going to kill the boss fight, and that boss fight will drop us the weapon we're looking for. Careful of the rune bear here. You'll know you're at the right place when you find a big flower. For some reason, I'm fat rolling. Uh, one second. There we go. Alright, let's go. To get out here, there's going to be a big bug guy hanging off of here. Be careful not to get knocked off. And then back here will be a boss door. And we'll go ahead and go inside, and you'll have to fight an omen killer and a Miranda flower at the same time.
And then once they're dead, that'll drop the Great Omen Killer Cleaver. If you'd like the Great Star's weapon, you'll head to the Road of Inequity side path here in Altus Plateau. And then we're going to make our way down this way, and there's going to be a carriage that is pulled by trolls. We're going to jump on the back of it and loot the Great Star's. That's how you get that. If you'd like the Great Axe, all you need to do is come to the Og Hill Lake North Grace. And then from this grace, we're going to make our way down across this bridge. And then down here somewhere will be a carriage being pulled by two trolls. And we're going to stop the carriage. And on the back of the carriage will be the Great Axe we're looking for in a chest. Sorry for that lag spike. And you can see the carriage there. To get it to stop, all you need to do is attack. And that will stop them. And then you can jump on the back back here. Let me go ahead and kill this guy real quick. And then up on here, you'll open the chest. And that will have the great axe inside. If you'd like the Great Horn Hammer, you can head to the Worshippers Woods here in the Siafra River. If you don't know how to get here, you can head over to here in the Mist Woods in Limgrave. And the River Well is right here, and that's how you get down inside of here. And then once you're here, we're going to make our way over past this crab. Up here, and then one of those uh, enemies are going to spawn right there. You can see them. And we're going to go ahead and kill him. And he has a chance to drop the weapon he's holding. And there it is. That's how you get the Great Horn Hammer. And you can just reset over and over again until the, the hammer drops for you. It's not a guaranteed drop, so you'll have to kill him multiple times, most likely. If you'd like the Great Sword, you'll head to the Kalem Ruins Grace here in Kalid. And then once you're here, we're just going to head back that way towards that carriage right there. And on the back of that carriage is a chest we're going to loot. And that chest will have the great sword that we're looking for. Careful of the big bird. And that's how you get the great sword. If you'd like to farm the gross messer, you can head over to the Tombs Word Catacombs here on the Weeping Peninsula. The dungeon itself is a little tucked away, so I'll show you where the entrance is. And it's just right behind this pillar here. It's kind of hidden. But once you come down inside of here, there is a skeleton inside this cave that has a chance to drop the weapon he's wielding. Not a super high chance, so you may have to kill him multiple times before you get the weapon. But I do have my drop rates modified so that I can show you the weapon dropping. And he spawns right here. And then once he's dead, he'll drop the gross messer, and you can see it over there to the right. And like I said earlier, it's not guaranteed, so you may have to kill him multiple times, and you can do that just by going to the last race visited. And then heading right back to him and killing him again. If you'd like the Guardian Sword Spear, you can head up to the Smoldering Church here in Kaelid. And then from here, we're just going to head down towards the minor Erd tree over this way. And there's going to be Erd tree guardians that wield the spear we're looking for. And we'll kill those guys, and they have a chance to drop the spear. I have my drop rates modified to guarantee the drop so you guys can see it. And I'll go ahead and show you one dropping. But there's multiple enemies down through here, as you can see. And that's how you get the guardian sword spear. If you'd like the Short Sword or the Halberd, you'll head to the Nomadic Merchant here in North Limgrave. 
You can get here from either the Saints Bridge, just cross over, or you can come from the Summon Water Village outskirts and head up. But he'll just be sitting right here playing his instrument. And you can purchase the Halberd or the Short Sword from him. If you'd like the Hammer, all you have to do is head to the West Capital Rampart here in the Royal Capital of Landell. And then once you're here, we're going to head down over here. Just hop down. And then up ahead, there's going to be a dog. I'm just going to run right past him. And over here, we can go ahead and hop up. Make your way into here. Sort of looks like the uh, round table hold. And then next to the sanctified wet blade, you will find the hammer. If you'd like the hand axe, you can head over to where I am now, and that is near the Fort Height West Grace here in Limgrave. And then once you're at this Grace, you can just head up this way, and there will be a nomadic merchant sitting right here. Oh, how nice and he will sell the hand axe that you're looking for right here. If you'd like the Hand Ballista, all you have to do is come down to the south of the Lookout Tower Grace here in the Weeping Peninsula. And then once you're at this tower, you'll just make your way up the field to this Forest Lookout Tower here. And at the top of the tower, we will find ourselves the Hand Ballista we're looking for. That's how you get the hand ballista. If you'd like the harp bow, all you need to do is head to the Shaded Castle Ramparts here in the in between the Mount Gelmer and Altus Plateau regions. And to get to this spot, all you need to do is head to the Bridge of Inequity, go down this way, hop down. There's a spirit spring over here somewhere, and then again down to here, and then up this way to the grace that I am now. And then once you have this grace and are here, you'll head back over this way. There's going to be some depraved perfumers along the way, but that's alright, we'll just ignore them. Hop down right here. Climb up these stairs. And the painting we need to touch is right here, and this will give us the first part of the way to get this bow. Then I'm going to use my memory of grace to return to the other grace, so I can fast travel up to where we need to go next. Now we're heading over to the rampart side path here in Altus Plateau. To get here, you can just head up the road here, up and around, just like that. And then we need to go up to the top of this cliff right here, so we're just going to go right around and right up. I didn't even travel there yet. Whoops. And now that we're here, we're going to do just that. And over here, a spirit should appear, and since we touch the painting, he will give us a reward. And that reward is the harp bow. If you'd like to farm the heavy crossbow, you can head to the gate front grace, and this is just towards the beginning of the game, right after you go from the first step up towards the gate front ruins. And then just inside the gate, there will be some enemies, and we can go ahead and kill them, and they have a chance to drop the crossbow we're looking for. 
I have my drop rates turned up so that you guys can see the item dropping. It might take a few more kills than for me, than for you, but these guys do drop the heavy crossbow, and you can see it right there. If you'd like health in Steeple, you'll head to the Snow Valley Ruins Overlook here in the mountaintops of the Giants. You can also come from the Freezing Lake Grace and head up and around, or the Castle Soul Main Gate and head up around. But we're trying to get around this spot here, because that's where a Tibia Mariner is, and that Tibia Mariner will drop us the weapon we're looking for. You can sort of just hug the right side of the cliff, and eventually you will see the Tibia Mariner right there. Tibia Mariner is dead, that'll drop health and steel, and a death root. If you'd like the Highland Axe, all you need to do is come to the Rampart Tower Grace here in the Castle Stormvale area. And then once you're here, we're just going to head out this door and jump right here. Land here, and then drop down onto this ledge here, and then down once more. Make your way through here and look for a painting. You can see it right over there. So I'm just going to jump. And the Highland Axe will be sitting right here. If you'd like the Hook Claws, all you have to do is come to the Stormvale Cliffside here in Stormvale Castle. And then once you're here, we're just going to make our way up. And you just head past these guys. And then back here, there will be an enemy. And we're going to go ahead and beat him up. And the hook claws will be sitting right here. If you'd like the horn bow, you'll need to make your way to the Siafra River Bank Grace here in the Siafra River. To get down into the river, you'll need to head over to the Mist Woods and then make your way down the Siafra River well entrance here, and that'll bring you down to where I am now. And then from here, we're going to head over this way. And then down underneath the stairs here. I believe it's right here. Is a Golden Rune 6. And the bow we're looking for is right here, I believe. Yep, that's how you get the horn bow. If you'd like the ice rind hatchet, you'll just head to the temple quarter here in Liernia of the Lakes. And then we're going to be making our way down over this way, looking for a ruined building with some flowers nearby. check this chest and see if it's this and there it is right here in this chest and I will uh, open my map and show you where it is right here and that's how you get that if you'd like the Inquisitor's Girandol or Girandol or however that's pronounced you'll head to the schoolhouse classroom grace here in the Rea Lucaria Academy and then from here we need to make our way out and get abducted by one of the Virgin Maidens. Hop on the wheel, ride your way down. At the bottom of this will be a Virgin Maiden, and this one has a special property. When it eats and kills you with, with its grab attack, it transports you to the Mount Gelmer region in like a side area. And in that side area, 
we will find a boss fight and we'll kill the boss fight and that's how we'll get the weapon. I'm gonna let him hit me because I need to take some damage. Now that he's ate me and I have low enough health to die, it should transport me to Mount Gelmer. Now that we're here, we're just going to make our way this way. I believe back here. Drop off right here. Just make sure you don't fall too far. This way. There's a grace right here. Feel free to grab it. And then up ahead, the floor is going to break and we're going to fall through. And it'll be a boss fight and we'll kill the boss and that's how we'll get the weapon. the other way. Yep. And once you slay them, that will drop the Inquisitors to your gold. If you'd like the Iron Ball Fist weapon, you'll head to the Boil Prawn Shack here in Laernia of the Lakes. And once you're here, you'll kill this NPC right here. He, is, he does have a small quest line with Raya, so if you want to do his quest line, make sure you do it before you kill him. But if you do kill him right here, you can get the iron ball that he's holding in his hand. Along with his bell bearing and a black guard's iron mask. If you'd like the Iron Cleaver, all you have to do is head to the Castle Morn Lift down in the Weeping Peninsula. And all you gotta do is kill the misbegotten enemies that wield the cleaver you're looking for, and I'll show you which ones those are. They're pretty close to the entrance. You can see him right there holding the cleaver. That one there to the left is also holding it. Most of the basic enemies down here do hold this cleaver, so it should be easy to farm. But I'll just kill this one. And that is how you get the iron cleaver. If you'd like the iron great sword, a good place to farm it is here in the Halig Tree Town Plaza Grace. In the Halig Tree. And then once you're here, you'll just turn around and head back up towards the way you come to this grace from. And there will be a red-maned misbegotten enemy over there at the end. You can see him in front of that item. And you can go ahead and kill him, and he has a chance to drop the sword. It's a low chance, so be ready to farm him for a while. I have my drop rates turned up to show the items dropping, so I will be able to get it for you. And that's how you get the Iron Greatsword. 
And like I mentioned earlier, it may take multiple kills, or even hundreds. Just depends on your luck. If you'd like to farm the Iron Spear, you can head down to the Nocron Eternal City Grace. And if you don't know how to get here, you have to go over to Starscar Dradon and kill him first. And then you can make your way back over to Fort Height West. And then right here, a massive hole will open up in the ground. And you can go down that hole, and then eventually you'll make your way to where I am now. And then we'll head out. And we're looking for an enemy that wields the spear we're looking for, as well as a red kite shield. And you can find one directly over here. And this guy has a chance to drop it. And he did drop it for me, so there is the iron spear. And also, you can just sort of kill a bunch more if you didn't get it your, your first time through. And then if you don't get it, you can always just reset by going back to the last grace visited. If you'd like the ivory sickle, you'll head to the village of Albanorix here in the southern part of Liernia of the Lakes. And this is underneath this large landmass, not on top of it. And then once you're here, at the Grace, we'll just head up this way. And there is a perfumer enemy right here, and then a pot up there. Nearby that pot, who happens to be actually a person, right here, is the Ivory Sickle. If you'd like the Jar Cannon, all you have to do is head to the 9th Mount Gelmer campsite here in Mount Gelmer. And you can easily get here from coming from the first Mount Gelmer campsite, heading across this, up some ladders, and then eventually you'll reach this area. But we're going to head up here into the Volcano Cave and kill a boss there, and that boss will drop the Jar Cannon. is right here. Feel free to grab this grace. There's the boss door. Kill the boss, it'll show the weapon dropping. And that's how you get the jar cannon. If you'd like the jawbone axe, you can head to the Worshippers Woods here in the Siafra River. If you don't know how to reach the Siafra River, you can head over to the Mist Woods here in Limgrave. And at the Siafra River well, you'll go down this. That's a long elevator ride, and eventually you will reach where we are now. And then once you're down here, we'll head over this way. And basically, we can kill any of the spirits that are holding a bow. Not that one. You can see he's not holding this axe. You'll see him pull his axe out. There it is. Any guy that's holding that axe, you can go ahead and kill. This one does drop that the weapon he's holding. But that's not the one we're after, we're after the other one. Which did drop the jawbone axe, you can see it up there at the top of the screen. And that's how you get that. If you'd like the guitar, all you have to do is head to here where I'm at, in Kalid. And this is just right outside of Fort Gale, this fort right here. And I'm gonna go in this fort, and then inside of a dark room and a chest, we'll find the weapon that we're looking for. The door is locked, so we're going to have to go around the outside. Go ahead and crush.
across this. And then hop down right here. And the weapon we're looking for is just sitting right here. That's how you get the Qatar. If you'd like the Knight's Greatsword, you can head up to the Black Knife Catacombs up here in the northern part of Liurnia of the Lakes. Pretty easy to get here. You just head from the either the Ruined Labyrinth or the Eastern Tableland and make your way up the road. But just outside the catacombs, there's going to be an enemy wielding the sword we're looking for. He has a chance to drop it. It's not guaranteed. So you might not get it your first try, but I'm going to go ahead and kill him. And he did drop it for me because I have my drop rates turned up. You can see it over there to the right. And there are some other ones you can farm throughout the world. Just any knight, really, wielding the sword. So go ahead and kill him. And that's how you get that. If you want the lance weapon, you'll need to come to the Warmaster Shack here in Limgrave. And then we're going to make our way up this way and then hop down onto this object, and that's where we'll get the lance. And the lance you're looking for will just be sitting right over here. If you want the large club, all you got to do is come from the Og Hill Lake South Grace. Make your way up to the Evergold, but instead of going into the Evergold, you just drop down right here, and then you'll be right where I'm at. And then from here, we're going to make our way down, and there's going to be a Spirit Spring. And then near the Spirit Spring will be the item that we're looking for. Guarded by a bunch of demi-humans. And that's how you get the large club. If you'd like the Lazuli Glintstone Sword, you'll head to the Schoolhouse Classroom Grace here in the Rhea Lucaria Academy. And then right near the Grace, there's going to be a white-robed enemy wielding the sword we'd like. And he has a chance to drop it. It is a rare drop, so it probably won't drop the first, like, 5-10 kills. But it will drop for me because I have my drop grades modified, so I can show you guys the item dropping. And here he is, and there it is, the Zoli Glintstone Sword. If you'd like the Long Haft Axe, bring yourself over to the Beside the Rampart Goal Grace and Castle Morn, and this is in the Weeping Peninsula at the very bottom of the map. And there are Long Haft Axe wielding, um, I don't know what they're called, I think they're called Misbegotten Creatures or something like that. But anyway, you just need to go across this bridge, and there will be one over here sleeping to our left kill him over and over again and eventually he will drop the axe he's wielding in his hand there and that is how you get yourself the long half axe it is a pretty rare drop so it'll probably take a few kills but that is how you get it if you'd like the lord sworn great sword all you have to do is head to the og hill lake north grace and limgrave Alternatively, you could come from the gate front, but we're just heading up through here to pick up the sword out of a chest. And the chest is just right over here near the scarf. And that's how you get the Lord Sworn Greatsword. If you'd like the Lord Sworn Straight Sword, all you gotta do is come to the Fourth Church of America here in the Weeping Peninsula. And then once you're here, there's just gonna be a headless enemy roaming around, and you're gonna go ahead and kill him. And he has a chance to drop the sword you're looking for. Or they, rather. That's how you get yourself the Lord Sworn Straight Sword. If you'd like Loretta's War Sickle, you'll head to the Halig Tree Town Plaza Grace here on the Halig Tree. Then once you're here, we're gonna make our way down to the Loretta boss fight. And then once we kill her, she'll drop the weapon we're looking for.
And the boss fight is just down inside of here, and I'll go ahead and skip to the part where I'm killing her. And once she's dead, she'll drop her Loretta's Mastery spell along with the Loretta's War Sickle. If you'd like the Lucerne, you'll head to the Lyernia Highway North Grace here in Lyernia of the Lakes. And then we're just going to make our way up slightly this way. And there's going to be a bunch of enemies fighting each other. And then we'll break a nearby cart, and that cart will reveal the Lucerne. I believe maybe it's this one here. Yep. And that's how you get the Lucerne. If you'd like Lusat's Glintstone Staff and Nox Flowing Sword, you'll head to Celia Understair here in Kaelid. And then in this town, we're going to go ahead and solve a puzzle, which just involves us lighting three towers. Lighting those three towers will open up the boss door over there. We're going to jump up on these buildings. Cross here. I've already lit this one, but you can climb this ladder right here and light the fire up there. And then we're going to cross over here. And you'll do the same thing right up inside of that tower. And then after you've done that, you can make your way over to this building here. Pop over here and then jump up right here. And then the final tower will be sitting right here. Just jump up there with our horse. Like this, and then that door right there will open. And then in here you'll fight two Nox enemies, and you'll kill them. And then they'll drop the sword, and then the staff is in the building behind them. Once they're dead, they'll drop the sword, and then inside of here in this chest, you'll find the Lusat staff. If you'd like to farm yourself the Magma Blade, you'll just need to come to the Temple of Igle here in Mount Gelmer. Now, the fastest way to do this is to go through the shortcut over that way, but if you don't have the shortcut yet unlocked, I'll take I'll run you through to where you can unlock the shortcut for the area. a virgin maiden right here you can just run around him go ahead and open this door that snake right there is wielding the blade you'd like and all you have to do is kill this snake over and over again until he drops it wow anyway kill the snake and he has a chance to drop the blade it's a very low drop chance I have my drop chances modified so I can show these blade weapons dropping for you. If you want the shortcut, 
Come over this way, kill this guy first. And then send this thing down right here. And that will bring you down to the main Temple of Iglay area where we first started the video. And then you can easily get back to that snake just by riding the shortcut and then resetting infinitely until you get it. And that's how you get the Magma Blade. If you'd like the Magma Worm Scale Sword, you'll need to go through the Ruinstrown Precipice up into the point where you reach the Overlook. Here in the Ernia of the Lakes. And then we're going to kill the Magma Worm Maker boss fight. And he has the guaranteed chance to drop the weapon we're looking for. Once he's dead, he should drop the weapon we're looking for. And again, that's just here in Lear any of the lakes. If you'd like the Mantis Blade, you'll head to the Gelmer Hero's Grave here in Mount Gelmer. If you don't know how to reach this dungeon, all you have to do is head from the first Mount Gelmer campsite up and around, straight down to here. That's one way you can get to it. The other way you can come from is the Craftsman Shack side. Head to this pillar here and then hop down, and that's how you get to here. And then once you're inside, you can make your way down through the dungeon. It is one of the chariot dungeons, so be ready for that. When you first come through, run all the way to the end where there's an opening right here to our right. Head out. Follow it down. Come inside this doorway, wait for it to go up, keep going. Hop to the left here. Up ahead there's going to be a flamethrower trap and some page enemies. Wait for the flamethrower trap to stop shooting its fire and then head through. Wait for the chariot to go through, and then follow it down. Come in here, wait for the chariot to go up, and then head down through this way. And then right to our right is going to be a cemetery shade. And you can go ahead and kill this guy, try not to get hit by the chariot like I did. Looks like he's getting killed by the chariot. And he will drop the Mantis Blade, and that's how you get that. If you want Mirai's Executioner Sword, you'll need to head to the Shaded Castle Inner Gate Grace here inside of the Shaded Castle. And you can easily get here by just going to the back here and then heading down, up the ladder here, and then make your way through there, and then eventually you'll hit this Grace. And then once you're at this grace, we're just going to head back this way. And we need to go to the boss fight of the area, kill the boss, and the boss will drop the weapon we're looking for. Careful, there's a lot of hidden trap enemies throughout this castle.
Now this will be down for you. It's not down for me because I've already been through here. So I'm going to pull the lever and wait for it. And then back here will be the boss fight. We're going to go down here and fight him. And then once we kill him, that will drop the weapon we're looking for. Alright, and then once he's dead, I will drop Mirai's Executioner Sword and Briar Great Shield. If you'd like the Meteoric Ore Blade, all you have to do is head to the uh, Stray from Kalid Highway North Grace, and this is in Kalid. And then you'll make your way over to the Waypoint Ruins down there, and then inside of the bottom part of that ruins, we will find the weapon we're looking for. Right here. Head down through here and open this door. And right here inside of this chest will be the weapon we're looking for. If you'd like the meteorite staff, you'll head to the Aeonia Swamp Shore Grace here in Kalid. And then from here, we're going to make our way up to the Street of Sages Ruins. And then right over here in this tower-like building, right inside of here will be the staff we're looking for. I apologize for that uh, lag spike. But the staff we're looking for is actually just sitting right there in that window. And that's how you get the Meteorite Staff. If you'd like the Mickle and Knight Sword, you'll head to the Prayer Room Grace here in the Halleck Tree. And then from here, we're going to head out the door and make our way over to that big bell tower right there. Go ahead and climb the ladder here. And at the top of this ladder, we'll find the sword we're looking for. If you'd like to get yourself the Misbegotten Shortbow, all you have to do is head to the Castle Morn Lift and the Weeping Peninsula at the bottom of the map here. And then we're going to go up the lift and on the second level of the castle, there will be some misbegotten enemies that, that wield a short, blo short bow and fly around. And we're just going to go ahead and kill those guys. And they have a chance to drop the bow they're wielding. I'm going to go ahead and hit this guy because he's going to hit me if I try to go up the ladder. And up here you just look for flying misbegotten enemies. Sorry for that lag spike. There's one right up there. And the flying ones have a chance to drop the misbegotten shortbow. If you'd like the miser cord, or however that's pronounced, you'll come to the Rampart Tower Grace here in Stormvale Castle. And then once you're here, we're going to head out the door and make sure you bring a stone sword key with you. Hop off down to here. And then hop down once more to here. Head through this door down here. And then we're immediately just going to jump 
right here, down on the end of this room. And this is where your stone sword key will come in. You'll stick it right here. And then inside this room, there's going to be a couple enemies. And the miser cord as well. The miser cord sitting right here, and as a bonus item, if you want, I believe it's a wet blade right here. And that's how you get that. If you'd like to farm the monk's flame blade, you can head over to the giant conquering hero's grave in the mountaintops of the giants. If you don't know how to get over here, you can come from the giant's grave post grace and just walk along the cliff side. And then hop over right here and then head over to the grave and then we'll go down inside. Just go ahead and run past this guy and hop out the window. And then run up this way. In this room right here, there would normally be a flamethrower trap, but since I've already been through, it's not up for me. Let me go ahead and kill this guy. And normally there will be a flame a flamethrower trap right here shooting fire, but since I've already been through, it's not up for me. But just right around the corner here is a fire monk, and he has the sword in his hand, as you can see. So we're going to go ahead and kill this guy, and he has a chance to drop the sword. It's not guaranteed, so you may have to do this multiple times. Once you kill him, he has a chance to drop all of his armor and his weapon. And there it is. If you'd like to farm the Monk's Flame Mace, you can head to the Giant Conquering Hero's Grave here in the mountaintops of the Giants. If you don't know how to get over to here, you can just go to the Giant's Grave Post Grace and then work your way across this way. There will be a little spot over here you can jump. Go ahead and jump and then head over this way and that will bring you down into where I am now. And then near the Grace, just right down here will be your... the enemy you're trying to kill to farm the weapon. Just right there. Easy to find him. We'll go ahead and kill him. And then once he's dead, he'll drop the mace. If he doesn't drop it, you can always head back up to the grace and reset there. And that is how you get that. If you'd like Moonvale, all you need to do is kill a boss in the Gale Tunnel. To get to the Gale Tunnel, you just head to the Rotview Balcony here in Kalid. And then from there, we're going to make our way down to the tunnel. Sorry for that lag spike. And right here is the Gale Tunnel. Go ahead and drop down right here. Feel free to grab that grace. Drop off right here. And then back inside here is the boss fight room, but I'll go ahead and show you that there is a grace just right inside of here so you can get back quicker in case you die.
once he's dead, he will drop Moonveil. As well as a Dragon Heart. If you'd like the Morning Star weapon, all you have to do is come down to the Castle Morn Rampart or the Bridge of Sacrifice Graces here in the Weeping Peninsula. And we're just going to make our way down to a crashed wagon over here and loot the um, chest. And then that chest will have the weapon we're looking for. And you can see the wagon down over there. That's how you get the Morning Star. If you like the Nagakiba, you can head to the Seaside Ruins on Limgrave. This is just near the first step where you spawn in. And under this large contraption here, there is the Bloody Finger Hunter Yura. And you have two options here to either kill him now and take the sword from him or do his quest line and at the end of the quest line you'll get the sword. I'm going to go ahead and kill him and show you the thing dropping. And once he's dead, that is how you get the Nagakiba. If you'd like the Knight Rider Flail, all you need to do is come to the Castle Morn Rampart Grace and Weeping Peninsula. And then you'll rest at this grace here and make it nightfall. And you'll see this Knight Rider over here roaming around. You'll have to kill him and then he will drop the flail you're looking for. he's dead that will give you the flail and barricade shield as, as well if you'd like the Knight Rider Glaive all you need to do is head to the Bellum Church here in Liernia of the Lakes and then once you're here you'll rest at the grace and you'll make it nightfall and then you'll head out this way, and then along this road right here, a Knight Rider will be pathing, and you can go ahead and kill him, and he will drop the Glaive. There he is. Kill him. That'll drop the Knight Rider Glaive. And Giant Hunt. If you'd like the Nobles Estoc, you can head over to the Waypoint Ruin Cellar here in Limgrave. And then you'll head out the cellar, and then over towards the road, you'll see this carriage being pulled. There's going to be a bunch of enemies, and the ones who drop the Estoc are wearing the hat. The one that's on my head right now is one of them. You can see the s doc in his hand. They, they aren't guaranteed to drop it, but I do have my drop rates tweaked so I can show you the item dropping. And you can see it, the Noble's s doc over there to the right at the top, and that is how you get that. If you'd like the Noble's Slender Sword, you'll head to the Schoolhouse Classroom Grace here in the Rhea Lucaria Academy. And then once you're here, we're just gonna head out this way, and there's gonna be three Noble-type enemies digging in the ground. You can see one right here. This one has a chance to drop the sword. And I have my drop rates turned up, so I should be able to show you the item dropping. And there's the sword. They also dropped their aristocrat set. There's another one back in here, and another one right here. And they all have a chance to drop it. You can easily just reset the three of them by going back to the grace. That's how you get that. If you'd like Nox Flowing Hammer, you'll head to the Ancestral Woods here in the Siafra River. This is after you go through the Nocron Eternal City area, past the Mimic Tier boss fight and up to here. And then once you're here, we're gonna drop down right here. Just 
just gonna run past all the enemies here. If you'd like, you can kill the ball down there for a larval tier. Instead of going through there, we're going to hop up. Not right here, right here. And over. And then up in this window, sitting on this ledge, we'll find the Nox Flowing Hammer. If you'd like the Omen Cleaver, all you need to do is head to the Liftside Chamber Grace or the Secluded Cell here in Stormvale Castle. This is right before you do the Godric the Grafted boss fight. And then just about right here on the northern part of the courtyard, you'll see the large ogre enemy. That guy right there. We're going to go ahead and kill this guy and he's going to drop us the Omen Cleaver. And that's how you get the Omen Cleaver. If you'd like the Onyx Lord's Great Sword, you'll head to the Sealed Tunnel. And this is in the Altus Plateau region, just right before Lane Dell. To get here, you can just go from the Outer Wall Phantom Tree, head down this way, and then down over to this. Pretty easy to find. And then once you're in here, right over here is going to be an invisible wall. You just roll. And this chest back here is one of the miner's bell bearings, if you want it. And I think behind it is another invisible wall. And then you go down the lift. You'll see a theme in this dungeon with the invisible walls. Cross the big tree. Jump down onto this one. Head through here. Fall down right through here. There's going to be a trap at the bottom. That's alright. And then we'll head back this way. There's going to be some debris and stuff. You can just roll past that. And then there's an invisible wall here. And now we're going to try to carefully fall here without dying. And back in here, there will be an Onyx Lord boss fight, and then once you kill him, that'll drop the weapon we came to get. he's dead. I should drop the weapon. If you'd like Ordovis's great sword, you can head to the Oriza Hero's Grave. And this is in the Altus Plateau. To get here, all you have to do is go to the Capital Rampart Grace, go up and around, drop down on the Spirit Spring right here, and then head down to here. And then once you're inside, you can grab the Grace and I recommend bringing the Margaret Shackle item with you because I'm going to use this item to trivialize the dungeon. If you don't know how to get it, you can go down to the Murkwater Coast down here. To the Murkwater Cave, and in that cave you'll find Patches just right inside it. It's a really small cave. And then once you find Patches, he'll be a vendor for you, and he'll sell you that item. And then you can come here. This is one of those chariot dungeons. And that's why I'm bringing this item with me, because it cheeses the second half of it. Just gonna drop down right here. And then I'm gonna come up here. Make a right. And 
go ahead and kill these basilisks. And then now I'm going to go ahead and use my Margaret Shackle, and these chariots are going to run into each other. What this item does is it activates traps and illusionary walls. So there's a trap up there that gets activated, and that causes these chariots to run into each other and spawn. And that gives you a full set along with an Ash of War. And now you're free to just traverse the dungeon without having to worry about getting ran over. And then you can come up here and open this boss door. And then down here at the end, we're going to go in, and there's two Crucible Knights. This is one of the hardest fights in the game, in my opinion, so it might take me a few tries. So I'll just skip to the part where I'm killing him. And once he's dead, that'll drop the Ordovis's Greatsword along with the whole Crucible set. If you'd like the Ornamental straight sword, all you need to do is come to the Four Belfries here on the western side of Liernia of the Lakes. And then once you're at the top, there will be a chest right over here with an imbued stone sword key. We're going to go ahead and grab that. And then make our way down to this tower right here. There are four towers, and it would be this one here. And you'll go ahead and stick your stone sword key in here. And that'll take you to the Chapel of Anticipation, and this is the tutorial area where you first created your character. And now you'll get to have a revenge fight with the Grafted Scion that killed you. And then once you kill him, that will drop the weapon you're looking for. how you get the ornamental straight sword as well as that shield if you'd like the parrying dagger you can head to the murkwater cave and this is an limb grave and then once you're at this cave it's pretty easy to find it you just head up from the murkwater coast here and just head down or you can come from the bottom part of the river and just head up but once you're inside you need to locate patches and make him become a vendor and then you'll be able to buy the parrying dagger from him. Go ahead and try to open up this chest. And that will spawn patches in. should surrender. Wait, wait, surrender. White flag and all. Almost killed him. Very close to killing him. Alright. And he'll surrender and then eventually become a merchant for you. Say forgive and forget. In exchange for honestly, frankly. So don't be I'll be ready to <laughs> no, I'll be ready to And now you need to reload the area and come back. I'm just gonna quit and exit and then restart. If you've been to the volcano manor, 
he will be up at the Volcano Manor instead. If you haven't been there, he'll still be here. And as you can see, he is not here for me because I've already been to the Volcano Manor. So I'm going to make my way up to the Volcano Manor. If you take that chest right there, it'll trap you and take you to the Mist Woods, and then you won't be able to fast travel. So I'm just going to go back to the entrance and then fast travel up to the Mount Gelmer's place, Volcano Manor. And then just back here in the entrance of the Volcano Manor will be Patches set up shop right here. And now he will sell you stuff and you can buy the parrying dagger from Patches as well as some other nice things like Margaret Shackle. If you'd like the Partizan, you can come to the Og Hill Lake North Grace here in Limgrave. This is about where you first begin the game near the first step. And in the gate front ruins here here will be a Godric Knight just patrolling through. And you can go ahead and kill him and he has a chance to drop the weapon he's wielding. And these guys are all over the world, these knights that wield this sort of partisan, but this is the earliest one you can get. And once you kill him, he has a chance to drop his full set shield and the partisan. If you'd like the Pest's Glaive, you can head up to the Church of Plague here in the Kalid region. If you don't know how to get up to the Church of Plague, all you have to do is go to the Salia Town of Sorcery, solve the puzzle in that town, and then head up through here. And then that will get you to the Church of Plague. And then once you're over this way, there's two Lesser Kindred of Rots guarding the entrance to the church, and you can kill them over and over again until you get the glaive they're holding. And I'll go ahead and kill them. And once they're dead, they have a chance to drop the glaive like I mentioned earlier. I have my drop rates turned up so you guys can see it dropping there it is and if you don't get it you can just reset at the grace over here and kill him again if you'd like to farm the pickaxe you can head down to the limgrave tunnels here in limgrave then once you're inside just kill pretty much any of the minor enemies and they have a chance to drop the pickaxe it's a pretty rare drop chance it might take you a minute but eventually you will get it i have my drop rates turned up so i can show you the item there it is and that's how you get the pickaxe if you'd like the pike, you can come to either the liftside chamber or the secluded cell here in Stormvale Castle. And this one's just right before Godric the Grafted. And you're going to make your way back into the large courtyard where there's a bunch of barricades and enemies. And then over here, on the other side of this here, on this body specifically will be the pike. Actually, that's magic grease. Maybe it's the other body. It's going to be one of these. There it is. And that's how you get the pike. If you'd like Prelate's Infernal Crozier, you'll head to the Seathwater Terminus here in Mount Gelmer. If you don't know how to get over to the Terminus, all you have to do is start from the Erdtree Gazing Hill and just go up through here, then down over through this way to the river, and then up through the river make your way through here and then you'll end up here at the Seathwater Terminus and we're just gonna head straight over to Fort Lead and inside of that fort we're gonna kill a prelate and he's gonna drop us the weapon we're looking for That's how you get that, along with the set. You can farm them for the set items. They don't all drop like that normally, but that's how you get them. If you'd like the Prince of Death staff, you'll have to come to the Deep Root Deaths. And then once you're here, 
You can come from the either the Across the Roots Grace and head down this way over to here, or you can come from the Nameless Eternal City and head up the route here, and then up this way over to here. But we need to get to this building, because that building holds the staff we're looking for. staff we're looking for is just sitting right here on this body. If you'd like the pulley bow, you'll head to the first Mount Gelmer campsite here in Mount Gelmer. And then once you're here, you're going to make your way up to this watchtower right here. And at the top of the watchtower will be the pulley bow. Holy bow will be right here, I think. No, that's fire arrows, so we must need to go up once more. Yep. And the pulley bow will be sitting right here. If you'd like the pulley crossbow, you just need to make your way to the Craftsman Shack here in Mount Gelmer. If you don't know how to get to the Craftsman Shack, you can start here at the Erdtree Gazing Hill. And just make your way up through here and around. You'll make your way to the Seathwater River Grace, and then you'll just head straight through the river, like so, over to the terminus. And then once you're at the terminus, you can just continue this way around the lava, up this direction, past the Hermit Shack, and then eventually you will reach the Craftsman Shack. And then once you're here, just right next to the Grace is the Pulley Crossbow. If you'd like the Raptor's Talons, you can head to the Sage's Cave here in the Altus Plateau. To get here, I just came from the Abandoned Coffin and ran all the way up this way, and that's how you get there. And then once you're here, we're going to make our way through the cave. There's multiple illusionary walls throughout the cave, so if you get stuck, just roll and you'll probably go through. And the raptor's talons will just be right here in this chest. If you'd like the red branch short bow, you'll head to the east capital rampart here in the capital of Lane Dell. And then once you're here, we're gonna head out. And then we're going to find an assassin enemy down towards this way. And once we kill him, he has a chance to drop the red short bow. is the red branch short bow you can see it to the right and then he may not drop it first try first try for you but you can just reset at the grace and run back until you get it if you'd like the reduvia dagger you'll just head to the murkwater coast or alternatively you can come up through here basically we're just trying to make our way towards the middle of this river right here in limgrave and then once we get there we're going to get invaded and that invader we're going to kill him and he will drop us the Reduvia Dagger.
if you're lower level during this invasion, um, another NPC will in will counter invade the invader and try to help you. So you can just sort of stall him out until that guy comes to help you. But I'm just going to go ahead and kill him. If I can find him. There he is. Pretty resistant to sleep, it seems. But once you kill him, that will drop a Duvia. If you'd like the regalia of EOK, or however that's pronounced, you'll head to the Astray from Kalid Highway North Grace. And this is in Kalid. And you'll need two Sound Sword keys, and we're going to head over to Gold Cave here. And back in the corner of this rot swamp will be an imp statue. And we'll stick our keys in there and we'll go inside a gold cave. Feel free to grab this grace. Sorry for that lag spike, and we're going to make a right here. And then back here, the floor is going to break. We're going to fall down in. We're just going to keep heading out. Drop down. Make a left. And then make a right here. Go up through here. Kill this guy. Pull the lever. Drop down. Make your way through here, and then this time we're going to go left. Instead of right, we're going to go left. And then through here, to the right will be a piece of wood blocking a path. We're going to go through it. And then right here, we're just going to drop down. Now we're gonna kill the duelist. He'll drop you the putrid corpse ashes and then we're gonna make our way through this door here. And the weapon we're looking for will be sitting right here. If you'd like the ringed finger, you can head to the Gelmer Hero's Grave here in Mount Gelmer. To get here, all you need to do is head from the first Mount Gelmer campsite up and around this way and then down. And then another way you can come from is over from this side, from the Craftsman Shack, and just jump over right here. But once you're down in here, we're going to make our way through the dungeon. And this is one of those chariot dungeons, so be ready for that. You have enough time to make it to the second open right here, to our right. Wait for it to turn around, and then follow it down. And then 
you also have enough time to make it to the second opening here. And then keep running. Jump to here. Wait for the chariot to head back up and then we're gonna run down that way. Once more, we're going to wait on the chariot. And once it heads back up, we're going to run down through the lava. I recommend spamming roll because it feels like it's a little faster. And then we're going to make our way to the left here. Down back here will be the ringed finger. And that's how you get that. If you'd like the Ripple Blade, you can make your way up to the Caria Manor here in the northern part of Liernia of the Lakes. This is after you defeat the Royal Knight Loretta boss fight, and you can just head out down to where I am right here. And then we're going to drop down by this teardrop scarab down to here. Go ahead and drop off of here. And then we're going to make our way down to that hole down there. And then there should be a merchant named Pitya down here as well. And you can go ahead and purchase stuff from him. He sells a larval tier, tier along with the Ripple Blade. If he is dead when you get here, you can pick up his bell bearing and take it to the round table hold and then buy it there. If you'd like the Ripple Crescent Halberd, you can head to the Fallen Ruins of the Lake here in Liernia of the Lakes. And then from here, you can make your way over to this marker and there will be a couple of Albanuric enemies that wield this weapon and they have a chance to drop it. And I'm going to go over there and kill one and show you it dropping so you can see that it actually does drop from these guys right here. And that is how you get the Ripple Crescent Halberd. If you'd like the Rivers of Blood Katana, you can head to the foot of the forge here in the mountaintops of the Giants. Alternatively, you can come from the Giants Grave Post Grace. We're just trying to get over here to the Church of Repose. We'll get invaded by an enemy there. And then once we kill that enemy, that's how we'll get the Rivers of Blood Katana. He also drops a helmet called Okina Mask. That's how you get Rivers of Blood. If you'd like the Rosis Axe, you'll head to the Black Knife Catacombs here in the northern part of Liernia of the Lakes. To get here, you can just travel from the Tableland or the Church of Vows up through here. And that'll take you straight here. Alternatively, you can come from the Frenzied Flame Village and just drop down on these little pieces and then make your way down to the entrance here. And then once you're inside, you'll bring a stone sword key with you. And like just sort of in the beginning of this place, there is a fog door that we're going to dispel with our stone sword key, and that will give us access to that weapon. And that's how you get that. If you'd like the rotten battle hammer, You'll head over to the Consecrated Snowfield Grace here in the Consecrated Snowfield. You can get here by going up the hidden path to Hallig Tree and then making your way up. And then from here, somewhere over here is going to be a rotten duelist and we're going to go ahead and kill him. Let me get my bearings where I'm at. Yep, we're just going to walk over this way 
And there should be some coffins about right here. And the duelist is sitting right there, so we're going to go ahead and kill him. he's dead, he'll drop the battle hammer along with the Rotten Duelist Helmet. If you'd like to farm the Rotten Crystal Spear, you can head up to the Alphael Inner Wall, and this is inside of the Halleck Tree. And once you're up here, an easy way to farm this is to head down here, and the roots right here on the other side will be some crystal enemies. The two with the spears on the left and right drop the spear. And an easy way to kill these guys is to bring this weapon I'm using now, the Falling Star Beast Jaw. You can bring it at like plus 9 and just get some FP. And then you can just spam the weapon art and it won't aggro the other ones. And it's basically just a free easy kill. And I'll go ahead and do it again for the other one. Now that they're both dead, we can head down there and loot our hopefully rotten crystal spear. And there it is. If you'd like the rotten crystal staff, you'll head to the Alphael inner wall here in the Halleck tree. And then once you're at this grace, we're going to make our way down over to these roots. And just over the roots will be three crystal guys. And you can see the one in the middle wields the staff we're looking for. And we're going to go ahead and kill him. He has a chance to drop it. It's not guaranteed, so it could take you either 1 kills or 20 kills. Just depends on your luck. So I'm going to go ahead and kill him and show the staff dropping. how you get the Rotten Crystal Staff. If you'd like the Rotten Crystal Sword, you'll head to the Alphael Inner Wall here in the Halig Tree. And then once you're here, you'll just make your way down and you'll see this tree branch with some roots and you'll hop this way and you'll see three crystal guys sitting there. And these guys are pretty dangerous and they'll probably kill me, so I'm going to go ahead and death run the chest and just grab the sword. Come on, give it to me. And there it is, Rotten Crystal Sword. If you'd like the Rotten Great Axe, you'll head up to the Ordina Liturgical Town here in the Consecrated Snowfield. And then once you're here, you'll just head up this way, and there'll be a Rotten Duelist right here. You'll go ahead and kill him, and that will drop the axe. And I believe he drops a piece of armor as well. I'm going to sneak up on him. And once he's dead, that drops the Rotten Great Axe and the Rotten Duelist Greaves. If you'd like the Rotten Staff, you'll head to the Prayer Room Grace here in the Halleck Tree. And then once you're here, we're going to head out the door. And we're going to make our way down to that pathway down there. And then we'll fight the Big Tree Guy. And the Big Tree Guy drops the staff. And then I'll go ahead and skip to the part where I'm killing him. And then once you slay him, he will drop the Rotten Staff. If you'd like the Ruins Greatsword, you'll have to come to the Red Main Castle here in Kaelid. The first requirement to do this, you'll need to first defeat Star Scourge Radon. And then once you have him defeated, 
You'll return to the chamber outside the plaza and make your way back up to here and speak to Jaren, an NPC. And then after you talk to him and, and exhaust his dialogue, you'll return back to the chamber outside the plaza and then you'll rest at the grace. And that will make this door here become a boss door. And you'll go inside this door and you'll kill the two guys inside. And then they will drop you the Ruins Greatsword. Sorry for that lag spike. Once they're dead, they should drop us the Ruins Greatsword. If you'd like the Rusted Anchor, all you have to do is come to the south of the Lookout Tower Grace, here in the Weeping Peninsula. And then once you're at this Grace, we're just going to make our way down, around this way, underneath the bridge, and then back to the Morn Tunnel. And then in the Morn Tunnel, we need to go all the way to where the boss is, kill the boss, and the boss will drop the rusted anchor Once you enter this room, you can just drop down right here and turn around. And then once we get to the room up ahead, we're just going to veer to the right. And then in the back right corner, we're going to head this way. And then the boss door will just be right up ahead, and then we can go ahead and kill the boss. Once you kill this boss, he'll drop the item we're looking for. It should be too hard. And that's how you get the rusted anchor. If you'd like the sacrificial axe, all you have to do is head to the Castle Morn Lift here in the Weeping Peninsula. And then once you're here, you'll rest at this grace here and make it nightfall. And then once it's nightfall, we're going to head out up towards my marker here, and we're going to fight a death bird, and that death bird is going to drop the axe we're looking for. And there's the death bird. These things are pretty strong, so be careful. Kill him. 
that will drop the sacrificial axe. If you'd like the Scavenger's Curved Sword, you'll just head to the first Mount Gelmer campsite here in Mount Gelmer. And then you'll make your way up through here, and then there's be, there'll be a Grafted Scion that drops down in front of you, and then behind the Grafted Scion will be the weapon we're looking for. find the weapon sitting right here. And that's how you get that. If you'd like the Scorpion Stinger Dagger, you'll head to the Grand Cloister, and this is at the Lake of Rot. Basically, you just travel across the lake, and eventually you'll hit this grace right here. And then from here, we're going to head down. hoping that pillar would block that shot. And then up inside of this room is going to be a chest, and that's where we'll pick up the weapon we're looking for. If you'd like the scythe, all you need to do is head to the Liernia Highway North Grace, and this is in Liernia of the Lakes. And then once you're here, You'll just make your way over towards this statue, and it's aiming this way, so you'll follow the cliff side down to the cliff bottom catacombs where I am now. And then once you're in here, you'll head down the elevator, and then I'll just make my way all the way to where the scythe is. There'll be some imps throughout the caves, so be careful. There's also some floor traps in this one. There's one right there. another right there. And then right around this corner in this room, there's going to be the scythe along with a trap and some imps. And that is how you get the scythe. If you'd like the Sentry's Torch, you'll head up to the Hermit's Merchant Shack here in Altus Plateau. And then just nearby there will be a merchant. And you can go ahead and purchase the torch directly from him. If you'd like the serpent bow, we're going to make our way to the abandoned cave here in Kaelid. And I'm going to start from the smoldering wall grace and just make my way over. Now I'm going to jump down over into these tree branches here. And then down inside of here is a cave called the Abandoned Cave, and this is where we'll find the Serpent Bow. Feel free to grab that grace. It 
This is a Scarlet Rot cave, so expect to get Scarlet Rot infused. And then just right down in here by that Iron Maiden will be the Serpent Bill you're looking for. I'm just going to run and grab it. And that's how you get that. If you'd like the Serpent God's Curved Sword, you can head to the Ruin Strone Precipice here in Lyurnia of the Lakes. And once you're here, we're going to make our way up. sword is above us, on the ledge above us, but we gotta make our way up there. And then the sword we're looking for is guarded by that large octopus, so we're going to go kill it. Or just run behind it and grab it. Let's do that one. And that's how you get the Serpent God's Curse Sword. If you'd like the Sham Sure weapon, you'll head to the Saints Bridge here in the Limgrave region. And then from here, I'm going to hop off the bridge and head straight up to this high road cave here. And then inside of that cave, we'll find the weapon we're looking for. Try to jump over towards the spirit spring. It'll soften your fall. And then at the end of this river will be a cave entrance, and we'll go inside of that cave. And you'll see it just right here. Go ahead and grab the grace, and then we'll just go ahead and start making our way down through the cave. There'll be a hole right here. You can go ahead and just go straight down it. Once you get to the bottom, it'll be a left or a right. Go right. Run past the wolves. I don't think you go that way. I'm pretty sure you just keep going this way. Careful of the wolf in the bush. And once you get into this room, you can just drop off right here. And then again onto the waterfall, and then one more, once more down to here. And then we're going to jump to there. And then the Shamter we're looking for will just be sitting right here. And that is how you get that. If you'd like the Shodel, you can head over to the Worshipper's Woods here in the Siafra River Bank. If you don't know how to get down here, all you have to do is head over to the Siafra River Well entrance on the east side of, of Limgrave. And then once you go down this, you'll eventually make your way up this way. And then we're headed over to this right here, where we'll talk to a merchant, and then he will sell us the weapon that we're looking for. Go ahead and climb the ladder here.
Once you get up here, you can mount your horse. And then make your way to the left this way. And then once you cross this bridge and waterfall area, the merchant will be down inside of here and you can purchase the shodel from him. He also sells a larval tier if you'd like that. A customer. And there's the shodel. If you'd like Soleria's tree, you'll head to the Nameless Eternal City Grace here in the Deep Root Depths. And then once you're here, we're going to make our way over to Soleria and kill her or him. And they will drop the Soleria's tree weapon. And I'll go ahead and skip to the part where I'm killing them. Once you slay them, they'll drop the weapon. If you'd like the soldier crossbow, a place you can farm that at is at the Saints Bridge here in Limgrave. Once you're here, you can make your way up and around here, and then up here, by some cr by some crucifixes, are going to be some foot soldier enemies that wield the crossbow we're looking for, and you can farm them until they drop it. I have my drop rates turned up so that you guys can see the item dropping. Just right up ahead, there's several enemies. The ones that drop it are the ones holding the crossbow right here. I'll just kill the one on the back. And that's how you get the soldier's crossbow. If you like a spear, you can head to Rampart Tower here in Stormvale Castle. And then we're going to go out and up the stairs, and there's some enemies up ahead that wield the spear that have a chance to drop it and I have my drop rates turned up so you guys can see the item dropping and that's how you get the regular old spear if you'd like the spiked Sastis or the beast repellent torch you'll need to head up here to the isolated merchant shack here in the northern part of Kaelid Pretty easy to get here, you just go to the KLM Ruins, right, head over this way, and then right here there'll be a ledge you can jump over. Then you'll head up around, and boom, you're at the Isolated Merchant Shack. And then you can purchase the two weapons I mentioned here in his inventory. Be careful if you come here at night time, there can be a Bell Bearing Hunter here, and he's pretty strong. If you'd like to farm the Spiked Club, you can head up to the Volcano Manor Cave here in Mount Galmer. Pretty easy to get over here, you just come from the ninth campsite or the first and make your way up. And then once you're up here, just outside the cave will be a demi-human enemy that holds the large spiked club in his hands. And we can go ahead and kill him, and he has a chance to drop the weapon we're looking for. And he did drop it, you can see it over there to the right at the top, and that's how you get the spiked club. If you'd like the spiked spear, all you need to do is come to the converted tower here on the western side of Lyernia of the Lakes. And then once you're at this tower, there's going to be some marionette soldiers walking around. There's one here, and then there's a group over around the corner by that cliff right there. But if you kill the ones wielding the spear, they have a chance to drop it. And that is how you get the spike spear. I didn't get it from that guy, so I'll go ahead and kill one more and see if we can get it. There's a group of three right here. That's how you get the Spike Spear. If you like St. Trina's Torch, you'll head to the Inner Consecrated Snowfield here in the Halig Tree area. To get here, you'll first need to get both halves of the Hidden Path of Halig Tree Medallion, and then make your way up to where I am now, and we're just going to go up towards this way, and there should be a carriage up there where we can loot the St. Trina's Torch out of the chest. It's 
kind of low visibility once you get up this way, so I'm just going to sort of look around. Where are you? I ended up finding it about right here. I guess it sort of travels between this area. So just sort of travel up like that. And then right over here on the back, we will find ourselves the St. Trude's Forge. I think this is the one where you have to stop it. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the giant and then come back. That's how you get St. Trina's Torch. If you like the Staff of Loss, you'll head to the Celia Understair here in Kaelid. And then once you're here, we're going to make our way up into Celia. And then we're going to get up on a tree branch that'll let us get on top of these buildings here. The branch is right here. And then we're going to make our way over to this building. Hopefully we can make this jump, and we can. And then right here, hanging off the ledge, on this corpse, you'll find the Staff of Loss. If you'd like the Staff of the Avatar, you'll head to the Great Waterfall Crest Grace here in the Deep Root Depths. And then right nearby is going to be one of those Erd Tree Guardians. Right there. And I'm going to go ahead and skip to the part where I'm killing them show you the item dropping. Once you slay that, it'll drop the staff of the avatar. If you like the staff of the guilty, you'll head to the Seethwater Terminus here in Mount Gelmer. Pretty easy to get here. You can just head from the Erdtree Grazing Hill all the way up through here and around over to the river and then up through the river and then eventually you'll make your way to where I am now at the Seethwater Terminus. And then we're going to head right over here and there's going to be some Thorn Sorcery enemies. And those enemies have a chance to drop their staff. It's not guaranteed, so you may have to kill multiple. But you can see them right there. There's one of them. They sort of look like that wearing the red. That one did not drop me the staff, so I'm going to go ahead and move up and kill this pack right here. And that one did drop me the staff of the guilty, and that's how you get that. If you'd like the Star Fist, all you have to do is head to the West Capital Rampart here in the Royal Capital of Landell. And then once you're here, we're going to make our way out this way. And we need to get up there to where that Colosseum is. And then the Starfist will be up there. Maybe it's in the next one. Actually, I think it's this way. There it is. If you'd like the steel wire torch, you'll head to the Castle Morn Lift down here on the Weeping Peninsula. And this is just at the very bottom of the map. And then once you're here, we're going to make our way up the lift. And then on the second level of the castle near some, uh, I don't really know what to call them, demi-humans, I believe. And we'll go ahead and find the item right nearby one of those guys. Just gonna run straight through here.
go ahead and enter this door here. There's a chest hidden in the corner there if you want it. And then right here is going to be a ladder. We're just going to go straight up it. Right back here to the left. At the end of this here will be the item you're looking for. I already picked it up and I did a take and I forgot to press record. So I apologize for not being able to show you, but it is sitting right here where these guys are. If you'd like to farm the stone club, you can head to the Halig Tree Promenade side of Grace here in the Halig Tree. And then once you're at this grace, you're just going to turn around and head back towards the battle mages. And then we're going to kill these battle mages and they have a chance to drop the weapon we're looking for. There's one here. did drop it for me. There's another one right over there and he also drops it. And that's how you get the stone club. If you like the Stormhawk Axe, you can head to the West Capital Rampart here in the Royal Capital of Landell. And then once you're here, we're just going to head out the door, jump into this, and then we can head out to the left here and drop down. Now we're gonna go into the main room here. And to the right will be a door. Go ahead and open it. Make your way through this way. It's gonna be some virgin maidens here. We're just gonna ignore them. And the weapon we're looking for is sitting right over here on this corpse. If you'd like the Sword of Night and Flame, you'll head to the Caria Manor Gate here in the Lyrnia of the Lakes region. And then once you're here, we're going to make our way up towards the Manor Lower Level Grace. If you already have that Grace, feel free to skip ahead. We're going to try to avoid the massive hands the best we can anyway. And now we're going to be at the grace that I just mentioned a little bit ago. Feel free to grab it. And then right here, we're going to jump straight over. And then once more down here. And then once again. And then right back here will be the sword that we're looking for. And this door leads you right back to the where we first came in. And that's how you get that. If you'd like the Sword of St. Trina, you'll head to the Rotview Balcony here in Kaelid. Make sure you bring a stone sword key with you, and we're going to head down to the Forsaken Ruins here. Be careful of the large birds, they're pretty aggressive and hit pretty hard. But you'll stick your stone sword key in right here. And then you'll head down in here. And then 
inside of this chest will be the Sword of St. Trina. If you'd like the Thorned Whip, all you have to do is head to the giant mountaintop catacombs here in the mountaintops of the giants. And then outside of this catacombs, right here, will be a fire prelate enemy. We're going to kill him, and he has a chance to drop that weapon. It's not guaranteed, so it might take you multiple kills. I went ahead and killed all the nearby surrounding enemies, so I could show you guys just me killing him. Once he's dead, he should drop the weapon we're looking for. If you'd like to get yourself the torch, you'll head down to the Church of Ella here in the Limgrave region. And this is just right where you first spawn in. And then the merchant nearby, Merchant Kale, will sell you the torch for 200 runes. If you'd like to get yourself the torch pole, you can head up to the left side Chamber Grace here in the Stormvale Castle area. And then from here, we're going to go over to those You can actually see the enemies that hold the torch pole right there is one of them. And then right over there is another. And I'm going to go ahead and go kill him. And he should drop that torch pole for us. And it is just a chance to drop, so you may have to kill him multiple times. there it is, and that's how you get the torch pole. If you'd like the tree spear, you'll head to the Liernia Highway South Grace in the southern part of Liernia of the Lakes. And then we're just going to make our way down the road here to the bridge. And that is where we'll get the tree spear. careful of the giant who's now free from the carriage. And that is how you get the tree spear. If you'd like the troll knight's sword, you'll head to the manor upper level here in the carrier manor. And once you're here, we're going to make our way up towards the boss fight. But instead of doing the boss fight, we're just going to kill the troll that's guarding it. Oh yeah, you can't mount up here. I forgot about that. And you can see the troll right there. We're going to go ahead and kill his lackeys and then kill him. he's dead, he will drop the weapon we're looking for. If you'd like the Troll's Golden Sword, you'll head to the Erdtree Gazing Hill here in the Altus Plateau region. And then we're just going to make our way over here, and then somewhere over here there's going to be a carriage. And on that carriage will be a chest, and that chest will have the weapon that we're looking for. That carriage to our right there holds a talisman, if you'd like it. And then this one right here, I believe, has the troll's golden sword. If you'd like the troll's hammer, you'll bring two stone sword keys to the old Althus tunnel here in the Althus plateau. To get here, I just came from the Erdtree Gazing Hill and just rode straight up the road all the way to here. And this is where you'll stick your two stone sword keys. And then 
once we're inside of here, the weapon we're looking for is actually pretty close to the entrance. Just fall down on top of this building here. And the weapon you want is actually just right inside of this room with these dogs. Right here. That's how you get the troll's hammer. If you'd like the twin blade, all you have to do is go to the seaside ruins or the first step here in Limgrave. This is right where you first begin the game. And we're going to make our way over to the dragon burnt ruins. And then we're going to do a little hop over to an area and then go down some stairs. And at the bottom of the stairs, we'll be able to access the twin blade we're looking for. The spot to jump is just right here. And these stairs are sitting right here. And inside this chest will be the twin blade. And that's how you get that. If you'd like the twin knight swords weapon, you'll head to the Road of Inequity side path here in the Altus Plateau. And then from here, we're going to go down to a spirit spring, hop up on this bridge, go straight up to this village. And then we're going to find the weapon we're looking for up that way. Along with the weapon, you will also get a set of armor. I think it's the royal set, if I remember correctly. That's the set of armor. I'm trying to get the sword, but these guys won't get out of my way. And there is the twin knight swords. If you want the Uchi Gatana, all you need to do is come to the Death Touch Catacombs, and this is in Limgrave. Pretty easy to get here. I just came from the Saints Bridge and walked right up around through here, and that takes you right to the door of the Death Touch Catacombs. And then the weapon is also not far off from inside of here, so we're just going to go straight to it and grab it. Drop off right here and turn around. Go through here. Make a left right here, and then the Uchi Gatana will just be sitting right here by the ledge. And that's how you get that. If you'd like a Rumi, you can head to the manor upper level here in Caria Manor. Then once you're here, we're just going to turn around and go back down the lift we came up. And then the weapon we're looking for isn't too far off from here. Come down to this plant here and then we're just going to walk straight off this way. And then down here to our left there's going to be some enemies. We're just going to ignore them and grab the weapon we're looking for. And that's how you get that. If you'd like the Venomous Fang Fist Weapon, you'll head to the Smoldering Wall here in K-Lid. And then we're going to make our way over to the Abandoned Cave. And inside of that cave, we will find the Fist Weapon that we're looking for. Just hop over right here. Feel free to grab this grace. This is a scarlet rot cave, so expect to be scarlet rotted.
just gonna go right here and drop down. Hop up here. Inside of this room, there'll be a large flower. And in the back here will be some Iron Maidens that are broken. You'll just use them to hop up through here. And then right here will be the Venomous Fang. If you'd like the Veteran's Prosthesis, you'll head to the Church of the Eclipse here in the Castle Soul. And then once you're here, we're going to head up to the boss fight kill the boss and the boss will drop the weapon we're looking for. I recommend bringing some bewitching branches because they're useful on his ads. See a theme with this one? It's a lot of delayed attacks, so you just expect that. this time. They're adapted. the veterans prosthesis. If you'd like the vulgar militia saw, you can head over to the Ferrum Great Bridge here in the northern part of Kalid. And you're going to want to farm a nearby enemy who's just right by the grace. He holds the saw in his hands, that's how you can tell you're at the right enemy. You can see him right there with the saw in his hands. And he has a chance to drop this weapon. It's not guaranteed. You may have to kill him multiple times. I have my drop rates increased so that I can show you guys the weapon drop rate. So let me just go ahead and kill him. And there you can see it over to the right, the Vulgar Militia Saw, as well as their full set you can get. If you'd like the Vulgar Militia Shodel, you'll head to the Ferrum Great Bridge here in the northern part of Kalid. And in between this great bridge and the bestial sanctum, there are multiple vulgar militia enemies that wield this weapon. And we can just go up here and farm them, just like so. When they have a chance to drop their weapons, they wield. This one has the shodel in his hands. So he should drop it for us. I have my drop rates modified to guarantee the drop, so here it is. It might not drop as easily for you, but you can always just run up through here, kill a bunch, reset at the grace, and head back through, and eventually you will get this weapon. 
If you'd like Vike's War Spear, you'll head to the Frenzied Flame Village outskirts here in Liernia of the Lakes. And then once you're here, you can make your way here by going up through here. And then we're going to make our way over up towards the Church of Inhibition. And then right about here, we're going to get invaded. And we're going to kill the invader, and that invader is going to drop us the weapon we're looking for. Should get dismounted here soon. Yep. We are now invaded right here. I'll go ahead and kill him. Now that he's dead, he'll drop his war spear. And if you'd like, there's the bloodied maiden set up in that church, along with a sacred tear. If you'd like the Wakazashi, you'll head to the Astray from Kalid Highway North Grace here in Kalid. And then we're going to make our way over to the Gold Cave here. And you'll need two stone sword keys to enter, so please bring two with you. Just at the back of this rot swamp will be the imp statue pedestal, and that's where you'll put the two stone sword keys, right here. Feel free to grab that grace. Make a right here. At the end of this hallway, there won't be a hole, but if you step where this hole is, it'll make one. And then you'll drop down in here. Head through here. Make a left. Make a right here. Pull this lever right here. I already pulled it, so they're already out for me. But then once you do that, you can drop down and make another left. This just down in here, inside of one of these cells, would be the Wakazashi. If you like the Warhawk's Talon, you can head to the Rampart Tower Grace here in the Castle of Stormvale. And then once you're here, we're going to head out the door, and there's going to be three bird enemies. One there, one over there hiding to our left, and then another one right there. And we can go ahead and kill these birds, and they have a chance to drop the weapon that we're looking for. I have my drop rates modified, so I can show you the item dropping. And that one did not drop it, so we're going to go ahead and kill this one now. And that is how you get the Warhawk's Talon. If you'd like to farm the Warped Axe, you can come to the Underground Roadside Grace here in the Subterranean Shunning Grounds in Landell. And then once you're at this Grace, you'll head out and there'll be several Omen enemies. There's one right there. 
that holds the axe in his hands and he has a chance to drop it. It's not guaranteed, so it might take you multiple kills. And once he's dead, he'll drop the axe. If you like the war pick weapon, all you need to do is head to the Og Hill Lake South Grace here in Limgrave. And then once you're here, there's some soldier enemies over this way that wield a war pick. And once you kill those guys, they have a chance to drop it. see him right here he'll pull out a war pick and there's another one right here and then once you kill them they have a chance to drop it and as you can see they drop for me and that's how you get the war pick if you'd like to farm the watchdog's great sword you can head over to the giant conquering hero's grave here in the mountaintops of the giants you can find this area by first going to the giant's grave post grace and then walking across this way and then leaping over right here and then head it over this way and that's how you get down to here but once you're here we're gonna make our way down this way wait for the monk to pass and we're gonna sneak by him and jump out the window here and then we can go ahead and pass the watchdog come up here to the light and then kill the imps as they enter Now we can lure the watchdog up to the light and that'll make it to where we can attack him. This is not a guaranteed drop. You may have to try multiple kills. So once you slay him, he has a chance to drop his sword. And there it is. I have my drop rates modified so that I can show you the item dropping. But it probably won't be as easy for you to get, so you may have to reset and kill them multiple times. If you'd like the Watchdog Staff, all you need to do is head to the Revenger's Shack or the Converted Tower. Basically, we're just making our way up to here where I am now, and this is in Liernia of the Lakes. Then once you're here, we're going to make our way down the side of the cliff into the Rhodes End Catacombs, and then shortly inside of that dungeon, there will be an illusionary wall, and we'll go ahead and knock that wall down and get the weapon we're looking for. Feel free to grab the grace. It's not this wall. It's the next one. And then back here in the back left corner will be the watchdog staff, and that's how you get that. If you'd like the Weathered Straight Sword, you can head to the Secluded Cell here in Stormvale Castle. And then from here, we need to farm some commoners. The commoners have a chance to drop the Weathered Straight Sword along with their commoner set. Come up through here, jump through the window, and then up ahead in a room, there's going to be about 10 commoners, and you can go ahead and kill them, and they have a chance to drop that stuff.
as you can see, he dropped the straight sword to the right there. And each of these enemies in this room have a chance to drop this item, and there is about 10 in total. And that's how you get that. If you'd like to get yourself the whip weapon, all you have to do is come to the Behind the Castle Grace in Castle Morn at the very bottom of the map. And then from this grace, we're just going to make our way down. And then the item we're looking for is going to be in a hole. Sorry for that lag spike. Jump across here. And then down over here, is there's going to be a hole in the floor. And we're going to go down the hole. And at the bottom is going to be the whip we're looking for. There's also going to be several enemies, so be careful. can't seem to get over this metal piece but here is the whip and that is how you get it. If you'd like the wing of Estelle you'll head to the Ainsel River Main Grace here in the Ainsel River. If you don't know how to get here you'll head over to the Nameless City Grace over here in the Deep Root Depths and there will be a chest or a coffin rather you'll get in and then that coffin will bring you over to the Ainsel River Main. And then once you're here we're gonna head this way. There's some bugs throughout here. I'm just going to run past everything. down here. And then right over here in this chest, this is where the wing of the stell will be. If you'd like the winged scythe, all you need to do is come to the Church of Pilgrimage here in the Weeping Peninsula. And then from here, we're just going to make our way straight down over to the Tombsward Ruins. And then inside of those ruins, we're going to get the site that we're looking for. right down inside of here there's gonna be some enemies two page guys and then inside of this room will be a chest and you can loot the chest and that is how you get the winged side if you'd like the Zamor curved sword you'll need to come to the Giants Conquering Heroes Grave and this is in the mountaintops of the Giants. If you don't know how to reach this spot, you start from the grave post over this way, and then you'll follow along the, the cliff side, and then right here you'll jump, and then that's how you get over to here. And then once you're here, we're gonna make our way through.
Hop out the window. Run past the cat. Normally right here, that would be spewing fire at you, but I've been through here before. But basically all you do is wait and then cross over when it's safe, and then you can hit it and disable it. And this will be up for you, but it's down for me because I've already been through. Once you get down here, you'll send it back up and hop off, and that will bring up one of those statues that shine light onto this circle, and you'll go pull this lever. And what we need to do is lure the giant that's at the end there up to this light and then kill it, and then that will unlock the boss door for the area. he's dead, it'll say somewhere a heavy door has opened. And we'll come down to the end here, and that's where the boss fight is. And when you kill them, or that boss, rather, that will drop these, the more curved sword, and I believe his full armor set as well. summoning a weapon. Thought he was gonna explode. Okay, he's fast. Noted. he's dead, he'll drop his sword and his full set. If you like these Y-Hander, you can head over to the isolated merchant shack here in the Weeping Peninsula. And then once you're here, the merchant nearby will sell you his Y-Hander. If you'd like any of the weapons listed in this timestamp, you'll have to go out and do quest lines. 
and like my other all-in-one guide videos I don't show quest line items because that would take way too much time and these videos are already very long so I'll just go ahead and tell you where you need to go um, for the Royal Greatsword you'll have to do Ronnie the Witch's quest line up in the Caria Manor for the Moonlight Greatsword same thing for the Magma Candlestick Whip, you'll have to progress Patches questline along with the Volcano Manor, and eventually you'll get that as a reward from Patches. The Serpent Bone Blade, you get from Tanith in the Volcano Manor questline. The Serpent Hunter Weapon, you get right before you fight Rykard, Lord of Blasphemy, and you can use that on him as like a special weapon to fight him. The Sword of Milos is a Dung Eater questline weapon, so you'll have to do the Dung Eater questline. The Frenzied Flame Seal, I actually already have a guide on this one and on my channel named How to Get the Frenzied Flame Seal, so you can check that out, and you can get it that way. For the Haslow's Petal Whip, you'll have to kill Juno Haslow in the Volcano Manor quest line as a kill contract, and you can get his armor as well as the Petal Whip. And the Devourer Scepter, you get from Recruzent Bernal on, in the Volcano Manor quest line, and that's towards the end of the game, you'll fight him at the Crumbling Faramazola as an invader. If you want the Inseparable Sword, you get that from D. Hunter of the Dead's brother after giving him his armor in the D. Hunter of the Dead deathbed via questline combo. If you'd like the Glintstone Chris, you'll have to do the Sorceress Salen questline, and I also have a guide for this one on my channel you can use if you want to get that. And the Claw Mark Seal is from the first Death Root turn in at the in the Garank Beast Hunter Clergyman Garank questline over there in Kalid. And the Roger's Raper you get from Roger. You first find him in Stormvale Castle, and if you don't find him there, you'll find him in the Round Table Hold on the balcony area right before the Mad Tongue Albridge fight. So that's how you get all of those quest line weapons, and I do apologize for not running you through how to get all of them, but that would just take ages, and I don't have time for that. If you'd like all the weapons in this timestamp, you can get these pretty early on in the game. All you need to do is head over to the Round Table Hold. And then once you're at the round table hold, you can just head over to the left here. And then back here, there will be a vendor known as the Twin Maidens. And you can go ahead and open their their menu here and purchase all of these weapons that are in this timestamp. And that's how you get those. And all of the weapons listed in this timestamp here are from Remembrance turn-ins. Um, I'm not going to go over all of them and talk about them because they're pretty self-explanatory. If you want the, for example, the Axe of Godric, you have to go kill Godric to graft it. It's pretty self-explanatory. So if you want any of the boss weapons, you're just going to have to kill the bosses and turn the remembrances in. And that brings me to the end of the all-in-one weapon locations guide video. If you found it helpful, leave me a like. That helps me out a ton. And consider subscribing for more guide and PvP content to come. I plan on doing videos just like this for pretty much everything in the game. So you can have pretty much every item or easily be able to get it. And that's about it for this video. Again, I appreciate you all, and I'll see you in the next one.